Okay, I make a motion to open the meeting. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, please. Trustee Setzer. Aye. Trustee Keating. Aye. Trustee Lampier. Aye. Trustee Likens. Aye. Mayor Plummer. Aye. Motion passes. Okay, is there any uh, anybody on the board who has a conflict of interest or anything to disclose regarding any of the application or uh, items before us this evening? I do not. I do not. I do not. Um, let's see. I do not. Oh, actually, I take that back. Um, I, I met, let's see, it was, uh, this is regarding the um, bid from GPI, and it actually had nothing to do with the bid. I had lunch with um, uh, somebody that they were hiring, um, and she wanted to move to Pittsburgh and wanted to know about Pittsburgh. So I met with her and told her about Pittsburgh. So, And I guess she was hired by them subsequently, but I just wanted to disclose that. Okay. Um, okay, so with that being said, would the uh, clerk please read the open meeting compliance certification. Okay, I'm going to limit it tonight um, to a few items. The public will have opportunities to comment on specific agenda items when they occur in the meeting and also at general matters at the end of meetings. Speakers can comment once in each comment window if it is on a specific agenda item. It is not a debate, deposition, or a panel discussion. Speakers must give their name, address, and organization. There shall be an exemption for any category of people protected by New York State law. If an attendee is a participating via web conference technology such as Zoom, the clerk will announce how attendees should signal that they wish to comment. This is, may differ by platform, but is typically accomplished through raise the hand feature. We are using Zoom tonight, so please raise your hand if you wish to speak. If you do not want to speak and you would like me to ask the question, please put it in the Q&A. I don't look at the chat button. Thank you. And please provide your address and name as well. Let's see. Speakers must observe the commonly accepted rules of courtesy, decorum, dignity, dignity, and good taste. And let's begin. Okay. Um, before we start this evening, um, we have two trustees. Uh, this is your last uh, public meeting as board members. So uh, I would like to recognize trustee Renee Stetzer Stetzers and uh, Trustee Dan Keating's years of service to our community serving on this board. Uh, we are grateful for your passion and your advocacy on behalf of our residents. And Dan, your advocacy for inclusion in our community and greater government transparency has been really important work. And I hope you will continue this advocacy as a resident. And Renee, your lifetime of work regarding walkable and bikeable communities and public safety is noteworthy. Your engagement with NYSTOT on many occasions, and that's the Department of Transportation of New York State, um, has helped us achieve many important goals for our active transportation plan. And it also is my hope that you continue to be a voice within our community addressing these critical issues. And so on behalf of the Board of Trustees, the Village Hall staff, and our DPW, we extend our very best wishes and our deep appreciation for your good work. And Trustee Keating has uh, asked to make a statement as well. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you for the kind words. Um, this one's longer. Sorry. It's my last chance to make it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to make it. What's that? Okay. Uh, to the villagers, trustees, and staff of Village Hall, it has been a pleasure serving you. Uh, one of the profound experiences of my life. It was everything I hoped it would be. Challenging, meaningful, engaging, uplifting, frustrating, invigorating, exhausting, thankless, and more. All of that plus it didn't pay very well. Uh, but more than anything, the work mattered. Even from this small perch, from this small community, politics matters. At this moment of reflection and transition, it's the work that stands out. I'm enormously proud of the work. Here's a short list of the things that we accomplished in the last five years on this board. We rewrote and modernized the code. We removed old language from the code that could only be used to discriminate. We passed two budgets with no tax increases. We lifted a moratorium on new development. We modernized the budgeting process to incorporate spreadsheets and other technological advancements 
to foster collaboration and improve transparency. We reorganized the staff at Village Hall during a turbulent time and made difficult choices to put the right people in the right roles so that they may best thrive for themselves and for you. We stayed out of court on 75 Monroe. Believe me, there are reasons to go to court. People who want to go to court, people who have a financial incentive to go to court, people who are very convincing that we should go to court. And we found a way to get tasks done without lawsuits. That is what the overwhelming majority of people told us they wanted from their representatives. And we did this with an eye toward getting the best possible results, results for the villagers, given what the judge has decided and what's allowed by our own laws. It's not easy work. We've moved the village boards onto Zoom, enabling, safely, uh, enabling safety for board members and broader access for the people to their representatives. We post those meetings on, our, on YouTube for all to see at any time. We promoted the training of more than 100 local families in Narcan use and facilitated the free delivery of this life-saving medicine to members of our community. We recognized, supported, and spoke up when our Black community members faced discrimination, overt racism, and racist structures in Pittsburgh and around the world. We publicly championed our LGBTQIA plus community members and told them they have a home here. We put up a village Facebook page so that more people had more information about what is happening and what will happen with their government. When we met a particularly complex new issue, that of legalized cannabis, we put it to a vote so that the villagers could directly express their desires given such a sea change. We enhanced the streets, making them safer for pedestrians, bikes, pets, vehicles, and the emergency responders. We resisted every call for a new moratorium. We supported our businesses. Some that had come to mind that had significant changes in the last five years were Lock 32, the Collins Pavilion, Simply Crepes, the Del Monte, Copper Leaf, the Pittsburgh Pub, and more. We handled incredibly sensitive HR issues that could have really affected people's lives and did what we thought was right for all involved, given the facts that we had and the laws and policies in place. We were at our best, particularly when the solutions weren't easy. We tried all kinds of things to reduce the speeding in the village, including a speeding summit dedicated only to this topic and track the ideas that came out of it to make sure we executed. We embraced our neighbors at Pontillo's when the personal health of some of their staff became endangered. We put up stop signs on South and Sutherland and both seemed to help. We secured a significant grant to improve our beloved Schoen place. I'm sure there's more. Notice that each of those bullets started with the word we. These actions were not done by one person. They were done by several, and in many cases by people who foundationally disagree. But they still ultimately happened by majority. Some of these were under Bob, some of them were under Elisa, and that's important. It's one thing to do work when you have an easy majority, it's quite another when you're in the minority. And you may not agree with everything on this list. You may not see all of those as wins for the community. That's fine, we agree to disagree. And there are some misses, some things that we wanted to accomplish and didn't, nobody is perfect. And there's also something else about that list that I want, that I just delivered. Every single one of those items faced significant opposition. Well, all but one. The one that we all agreed on is improvements for pedestrians. Um, that didn't face board opposition. That doesn't mean it was easy though. It has been incredibly hard and the results are noticeable and impactful. Renee has been point on all of that and uh, with Elisa's support and a hat tip to them. So that entire list except for pedestrian safety, face serious, aggressive, often belligerent pushback. Some of those headwinds were from a small segment of residents, and that's fine, that's their opinion. The job is to hear them and take whatever wisdom is in their ideas. But mostly those items face challenges from fellow board members. The idea wasn't debated on its own merits, it was debated based on who raised it. And that was frustrating. But that's politics, I guess. I was naive to think that only happened at the state or national level. Clearly, it happens at the local level too. Live and learn. 
But collectively, despite this, a majority of us pushed for those things and we made them happen despite aggressive pushback, accusatory Facebook posts, and public scorn from a few loud voices. And that negativity is a shame. It's the downside of the job. It doesn't have to be that, that way, and I'm hopeful that people can cool out. The pendulum swings in democracy. I'm glad for that. I'm glad to have done this work and then hand it to someone else. It's time for another point of view to represent the people. With that in mind, I'll present a call to action for the next cohort of trustees. My challenge to the board is to do the work in a less destructive way. Your job is not to be the voice of resistance opposing what's before you because of who proposed it. You're the representatives of the people. Time to be constructive for the villagers and for all of the villagers, not just your friends. You represent all of us, including me and my family, and I wish you the best. I'd ask that the next board take a more, more of a collaborative approach of how can I make this idea better rather than to just shoot it down because your opponent suggested it. To lead with possibility, not fear. I'll give you an example from this week. It's one thing to sit back and write another accusatory Facebook post about the budget, one that points the finger. It's another to work through all the difficulties of a budget that solve as many problems for the people and work together and build a coalition to pass it. We had both approaches represented on the board this week, yet again. Being a critic on Facebook is easy. Being someone who gets something done is hard. But the people voted it, us into office to get things done. You will need three votes to pass a budget. Time to compromise and produce, not just criticize. I'm sincere in wishing you all good luck. It's your budget, not mine and Renee's. We helped with the first draft. It's yours to finish and pass. It will have your names on it, not ours. I'd like to include, and I'm almost done. I would like to include another apology for being overly aggressive at times. There were a handful of times I wasn't at my best during this run. That's my responsibility and I'm sorry. The work was a grind and it was often at the end of a long day. The trustees meetings were unnecessarily long and stressful and they still are. Um, I'm a sensitive man. Uh, the personal attacks wear me down. I inherited a finely tuned bullshit meter from my father and it often sounds the alarm in politics. I wasn't always healthy during my tenure and I'm a single dad raising kids, juggling several jobs. And when all of these factors combined with fatigue and a feeling of being picked on, I can be loud. I apologize for that. I don't like myself in those moments either. So to Lily and Justin, uh, Elisa and Bob, I apologize for those moments and to those who witnessed them as well. Let's end with some thank yous and well wishes. Um, first, thank you, Dorothea. Um, you are steady, you are a pro, and you have my respect. Um, we've watched you grow in your professional abilities and you have exceeded the already high expectations. Um, Brooklyn is not here. Brooklyn's not here? No, okay. not Well, here. to Brooklyn, he's a dignified man with a bright future and I wish the best for him. And I hope to stay in touch. Steve is also not here, is Steve on the line? Yeah, he's not here. He's not here. Steve, you approach your job with the goal of coming up with a solution that works within the rules, and you do that for anyone before you. I really admire your, your can-do attitude with an eye kept on doing what's allowed. Zach, you might have the hardest job of them all, and you keep it very steady. Um, the DPW team you've developed give their best to our community, and it makes it safer, and it makes it shine. Uh, Jeff Turner, Jeff, buddy, you are uh, my favorite lawyer I've ever worked with. Um, your counsel is thorough, fair, well-considered, easy to understand, and your heart is in the right place. So thank you all. To the next board, Elisa, Dave, Lisa, and Lily, and Justin, I wish you the best. Keep doing what's right for the people. You're here to represent them to do their will. To those who stepped in and ran in contested elections, I thank you. That's Dave Ferris, Peggy Brzee, Bob Corby, Lisa Plummer, Renee Stetzer, Justin Lightgeb, Lisa Cove, Dave Marshall, and Jared Cook. Giving people a choice matters. I hope more will run for office in the future, do the work, 
then pass the baton to the next neighbor. Thank you to all that I served alongside. I learned from each of you, and you all did important work. That's Frank, Peggy, Bob, Lily, Justin, uh, Lisa, and Renee. Um, thank you to Renee. Thank you for your service, for your friendship, for your kindness and coaching. Uh, you're a real inspiration to our community, and we were all lucky to have you. Um, a final thank you to Maggie and Lila and Hunnis and to Jen. Love you all. Thank you to Jesse as well. And last, thank you to the villagers for entrusting us to do great work together. And to the next group of trustees, please get to work. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Okay. Good. All right. Uh, first thing up. The village handicap chair. Yes. Yes. And do you want to fill us in? Because this has been an ongoing concern. It's the chair that's right out, you know, going down the stairwell for the access downstairs. So. so the village installed the handicap chair at the request of the American Legion. I want to say it's been about eight, nine years now. Um, the chair initially worked great. We didn't have any issues. Actually, it been very much use. Over the last year and a half. A year and a half? Yeah. It's been a constant source of anxiety, um, frustration. We have spent countless dollars and time trying to get it repaired. It's come down to the chair needs to be replaced. Um, unfortunately, that's not a cheap cost. Uh, originally, it was a grant. We received a grant for the chair, which was fabulous. But now it's time we have to pay for that. And it's going to probably run us about $20,000. So what I'm going to ask the board to do tonight is authorize me to go get three bids for the replacement of the chair. The difficult part of this is I'm going to ask you to allow me to take the money from fund balance because this is an unbudgeted item and it is a necessity. And I have Legion members here to explain that necessity to you to hopefully convince you alongside me. And the chair isn't working now. No, it is not yeah. working now. And I'd rather not so spend $1,000 to have it repaired. I'd rather put that money okay. into a new chair Okay. so they can do what they need to do. So we're sort of throwing the good money after the bad. Okay. I didn't, I didn't know there was a replacement chair. That's, that's remarkable. No, well, there, it will be if I can convince them. There isn't, there isn't one yet. And we think that's why you're here to help us understand why we should replace the chair. Right. Yeah. Through a series of difficult, it seemed to solve the problem for a while, and then I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, the last fix was last Friday. It actually, Mr. Hercutz got on the chair. It went not even 12 inches and broke down. Yeah. So it's. It's the wrong chair is what we're coming to. It can't handle, and I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. I point at myself. I can't think it can't handle certain weight limits. And it just, it, and the age of it is crushing the metal and there's fatigue on the track itself. It's just outlived its use, it sounds like too. You know, right. I think it's just time. Like nine years in. Yeah, Lily, yeah. I, I, I don't know if we need a motion. I assume that we do. I, yes, yes, you need to motion to yep. expand the budget to allow me to take from fund balance to expend the money to get the new chair. Of course, I would get the bids and bring it to the board for approval mm -hmm. to go ahead and purchase the That's, chair. I'm, I'm asking for the procedure. I'm wondering if we need to make a resolution, uh, a motion to um, send it out to bid or whether that is an automatic. I think both. Oh. Okay. I would ask for both. Yeah, do, do both in the motion. Okay. Yeah. So I will make a motion to direct the village clerk to um, send out to bid RFQs for uh, the replacement of the handicap access chair. And to expand the budget. And to expand the budget to, use the for, to um, allow for the um, procurement of a replacement chair. I'll send it. Okay, we have a second roll call, please. <clears throat> okay, Trustee Lincoln. Aye. Trustee Landfield. Aye. Trustee Keating. Aye. Trustee Stetzer. Aye. Mayor Plummer. Aye. Motion passes. Thank so you. You're on your way to getting a new chair. <laughs> <laughs> that's phenomenal. I, I thought it was just funny, just being a bad shape, and that's it. I just, this is wonderful. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> no, and then, thanks for coming. Happened. Thank you for coming in, too. We appreciate it. Okay. Mayor, yeah. In that same thing, I fell downstairs on the three steps. 
don't know, a couple months ago now, right. split my elbow open, all that, because there's no handrail on those steps. Oh, well, that's something we should look at. Oh, the other thing. Okay, let's look into that. You know what? We'll have Steve take a look at that, and he can maybe make a recommendation on that. Right. We can have yeah. it looked at. I know in the past it was looked at. The problem, I think, is with the floor, and it very well might be that there's some asbestos in the oh, floor. Oh, yeah, they don't want to. Oh, okay. Well, let, let's, we, let's we revisit. We can take a look at it, and it might require some asbestos testing. And okay. We can do. Let's revisit that. Th thanks for bringing that up. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to say sure. thank you for coming in and, and thank you for your patience with the, uh, some of the out of date equipment there. I, I did uh, go down for one of the breakfasts the other day and spoke with Al, and, and uh, they were having troubles with the, the chair then, so I know it's been an issue. And uh, it's um, frustrating. Appreciate you sticking with us and, and your patience and getting results. Yes, for some of us, stairs are a very great challenge. Yeah, yeah, we understand. And you're our favorite neighbors. <laughs> okay, thanks again. All righty, we're going on to. Uh, agenda item number two, this is the special permit application for Cycle Cafe. Uh, would it be okay if I use this podium? Oh, we should, have pulled, we should have pulled it out, actually. Um, okay. Whoops, careful. Look at that. Maybe you can push it back a little. Just a little. Thank you. So I'm going to be uh, fairly brief. Um, but, um, oh, excuse me, name and address, please, for the record. Sure. Uh, so my name is Chuck Mancini, M-A-N-C-I-N-I. -I. My address is 30 Ford's Crossing, Hanoi Falls, New York, 14472. And um, I am representing uh, a company that I own called Rivendell Cycling, and uh, Rivendell Cycling LLC. And, um, and I'm seeking a special permit application uh, from this board. Uh, the application is to open up a cycling cafe at the building at 5 State Street, which many of you will recall was once a Starbucks uh, for many years until it moved down to the library. And most recently, it has been um, Rachel's Mediterranean Grill. Is there any other information I need Dorothea to provide? Yeah, you're okay. you're on a roll now. So um, today, I'm going to have some brief remarks, and then um, I've, uh, I've asked um, uh, the landscape architect that's assisting me with the, on this project, Ryan Kelly, um, uh, to, to present a few renderings uh, to, the, uh, to the board. Um, our plan is going to require approvals from planning and zoning, uh, from historic preservation, and from the full village board, which we understand can only come after a public hearing. Uh, so tonight, um, we're going to present you with information and request that you schedule that public hearing uh, sometime next month, one of your two meetings next month, uh, and formally consider our application for approval. We understand that uh, some of this is contingent on planning and zoning. Uh, they meet, of course, on April 5th, and we're hoping that we'll, 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 we'll re receive their approval, but we'll see. Um, we did meet with planning and zoning earlier this month on March 1st uh, to present our concept. Uh, we also met with historic preservation this past Monday. Both boards provided some valuable input, and in fact, uh, Ryan will share uh, some of the modifications uh, to our plan uh, that are resulting from the input from historic preservation. Um, we provided background information for today's meeting. Um, I've got hard copies, if anybody would like one. Uh, they were PDFs provided. Uh, if any of um, our, uh, uh, anybody present from the public wants one, they're welcome to grab one. Excuse um, me, the, the book we have, we have those copies in okay, our packet. So thank set. you. Yeah, um, thank you. Sam. And uh, we also have, and I'll just set these here in case anybody wants them. Can we hand them to the clerk, please? Uh, yes, we have um, renderings that will be uh, presented by, uh, by Ryan if somebody wants um, a larger version. So uh, the Cycling Cafe would be opened under license from La Fabrica Cycling Cafe in Girona, Spain. Um, all of the background is provided in, in the background materials. Uh, the one thing I want to highlight is the license agreement does have a requirement that the cafe be located in a suitable location, accessible to cyclists, with a historic feel, and an outdoor courtyard, terrace, or patio seating area. Um, the building at 5 State Street is in a historic village, so it meets uh, some aspects of the license agreement, but it does not have a courtyard or a terrace seating area. So um, our proposal um, and request um, for approval from the various uh, boards of the village 
uh, is that we convert the five space parking lot into a historic courtyard, a historic a cobblestone courtyard with a historic feel. We believe this is very consistent with the 2019 comprehensive plan. It's going to transform what is pretty much an eyesore parking lot into a beautiful historic courtyard that's accessible to everyone in the village. Uh, it's going to enrich, we believe, neighborhood life in the village. And because it's a cycling cafe, which I know, uh, Renee, that you are a champion of, uh, it's going to promote cycling. And, and we, we really believe that it will have a significant impact on, on cycling. Um, and, and I'll just get into that in just a minute. We all know that it's a highly sustainable form of transportation. And, and, and I think a um, highly recognized cycling cafe in the middle of the village is, is going to be fantastic. Um, so our requirements that, um, that I asked the, the architecture team to work with, the courtyard had to have historic character. Uh, it had to create old world character and charm. And in order to do that, I asked for cobblestones. Um, I also asked that because we are in, in a winter climate here, we have a, a harsh winter, um, that it be radiant heated. So the cobblestones would be radiant heated. They do this um, in ski resorts out west. So that when it snows, the snow melts immediately upon heating, hitting the, the heated cobbles. So shoveling the cobbles is not going to be necessary, and the courtyard can be used throughout the year. Um, I asked them that they try to replicate the, the atmosphere of La Fabrica Girona, which means it must be inviting, it must have uh, some intimacy, and it must include greenery. Uh, the, the, the owners of La Fabrica are very passionate about including greenery. And in fact, one of the license agreements, uh, one of the license terms that I have to agree to is to include fresh flowers inside the cafe on a weekly basis. So uh, they're passionate about, about the green aspects of the cafe, which I'm happy to support. Uh, the design had to fit seamlessly in and respect the historic character of the village. Um, I asked that the courtyard be sufficiently large to accommodate 34 or more customers at outdoor tables. One of those would be communal, others for two or four people. Uh, this is absolutely key. As you know, this is a small building. Uh, you also know that uh, village rents, taxes, labor are not um, are, are significant, and um, and so we need the revenue from those outdoor tables. And then finally, I requested three things that are cycling related. First, I asked for an area for secure parking of, of bicycles, um, and I asked for a bike wash area where somebody coming in with a dusty, muddy bike could hose it off um, in a secure area. And finally, I asked for a fountain to refill water bottles with historic character. And uh, so the team has come up with the design. Um, there are eight tests to the special permit. We've uh, provided answers to all those, but I'd like to just briefly address two areas um, that might not be as self-evident from the answers and materials <laughs> I provided. One is our operating model and expectations for seating, and the second is parking. So first, our operating model. Uh, we would operate um, on five days a week from 7 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon. On Sundays, we would open at noon and close at 4. And on, on Tuesdays, we will be closed. So this is a 7 to 3 most days of the week. Um, in terms of employees, I'm expecting, I'm going to be an owner operator. That was actually one of the reasons I was able to secure um, the ability to be licensed. Uh, and as an owner operator, I'll be there most days of the week. Uh, we'll have um, four employees on most days. On busy days, we'll have two more, so there'll be six, six others. Um, the target market, of course, is cyclists. Um, and I just want to make a mention of the kind of cafe we're going to be. Cafes typically target three types of people. Uh, one is people that want grab and go. They want to get a paper cup with coffee. They want food to go, a breakfast sandwich, um, and they want to grab and go. The second type is remote workers. The people that pull up into a parking space, leave their car there for most of the day, they go into a coffee shop, they order a coffee, they open their laptop, and they sit there for hours on end, tapping away on their keyboards, sipping their coffee, and using a parking. 
I'm going to just remind you of the time. Yes. Let and me, the, thank third, you. the third is the social and meditative person. It wants to come, fellowship, and, and think. That is us. We're not the first two. In fact, we're not going to offer Wi-Fi. We're going to discourage remote workers. And um, I just brought a sample. Um, we're not going to be doing paper cups. Uh, we're going to actually do, we're actually going to have custom mugs um, for every different type of coffee. This is a flat white mug, custom made in, uh, in Europe. Um, and we're going to be importing those, uh, the, the, the crockery, because we want an experience. We want a historic experience. So that's, that's what we're going about. Um, in terms of parking, our primary customers are cyclists. Cyclists will park at the cafe. In terms of our employees, we're going to discourage them from driving to the cafe if they can cycle. That's what we're going to promote. Um, we're going to tell them they can't park in the village lot across the street. They can find parking a few blocks away, or we're going to find arrangements with, with other parties. Um, so that's um, the background on what we're doing. Hopefully, the background information was helpful. And then, Ryan, could you just briefly go through the courtyard for the, for the board? Sure. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Ryan Kelly, RPK, Landscape Architecture, for the record. Um, I'll, I'll be brief. Uh, it's really our design team is extremely diligent on creating alignment with the overall comprehensive plan, the DOT, um, I'm sorry, the transportation plan, and making this outdoor seating area bike friendly, pedestrian friendly. Um, we've, we've made substantial improvements to accessibility. Um, and really, our big challenge was creating a private experience inside the courtyard, but at the same time, trying to make this public facing. So the two things I'd like to point out were um, we've added some walls to make the internal bones of the courtyard feel private. And we've opened up the northeast corner with tiered seating that you see in the bottom right to really kind of have that public uh, facing piece for customers and also social impact. Thank you. So, and just to kind of recap what we did discuss with the press board, um, some renderings top right here. Um, we had some feedback on wall heights, pillar heights, so we will be making some modifications over the course of the next week for uh, gearing up for the four or five plane board meeting. Uh, heights on walls will reduce uh, to neighboring views and pillars in the front of the tree will, will reduce, but we feel this was uh, uh, pretty well uh, thought out and inviting to community and customers. That's all for me. Thank Thanks for the time. Thank you. Okay, I bring it back to the board. If, any questions? Any comments from people? Okay, I'd set the board right now, and then we'll, we'll reach out. Yeah, Julie. Thank you. Thank you. It's the second time I was able to hear your presentation, and I was also present at the HBB presentation. Um, I do have a couple of questions, and what I'm using for reference is the village's uh, guide to special use permits, because that's the criteria by which we will be looking at your application. Um, one of the questions I have, and in no particular order, that we would want um, addressed when you do come for public hearing is um, trash. How that will be accommodated uh, on your property, what your plan is for that, that would be one. Number two is handicap access. Um, I couldn't tell from your rendering whether this was indicated as your handicap, um, which is beyond a fence, and how that individual will then access your property uh, or, the, or inside the cafe. If, if it is indeed ADB <coughs> compliant, we would be looking at that as well. Um, do I understand that what we're looking at here is an instrument survey? Oh, that's correct. Okay. So the property lines have all been honored, and, and um, those are all correct? Correct. Okay. Okay. Would you like me to briefly give two quick answers to uh, your, your first questions? Um, or, you, you may, or time. you may have them prepared for the public hearing. I, I would say you could answer now and also at the public hearing. If right. we the date. Yeah. So, um, uh, so the first one was, was it the, um, the trash? The trash. So there's a current easement agreement with the Village Bakery next door, <clears> and there is a, a shared uh, trash bag. It's not accurate, if I might say. There, there oh, excuse me one second. Excuse me one second. Hang on. I need to recognize you. Sorry. Okay. So well, I'll recognize you in a minute. If you could just proceed and answer the 
the questions for our trustee, the other question, and then we'll I'll recognize it. Thanks, Charlie. Okay, so so the first is uh, the easement with the Village Bakery. Uh, the second item was handicapped access. Um, there is a shared handicapped space with the Village Bakery. And then uh, you will notice on the renderings that we've also provided um, handicapped access or um, from the front from the front of the building, yeah. there is a hand ramp I can yep. um, detail. Okay. There's a wall right here. You see it? I see that. Yeah. But it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, I don't, not clear where that person would park. <clears throat> In order to access the handicap ramp. Right, so it would be on the side of the building. Um, uh, In other words, it's up here. I'm looking at it correctly. Yes, yeah, so they would have to come down. To the they sidewalk, would have to come down the sidewalk and, then and around. The front. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, yes. Hi, Charlie Fitzsimmons. I own the Village Bakery next door. Jojo down the street. I live in Pittsburgh. Um, just to comment on a couple of the items that Mr. Mancini is referencing. The, there is no permanent easement. There's an old deed that has some shared services. It's old. Part of those shared services was that I would have access to use the handicapped spot in their parking lot. Same handicapped spot that's been there. For that, they could have access to my garbage and there's still a water line that's shared the water line goes in which we're, we're getting our new water line right now so that we can split the service with him getting completely rid of that parking spot in my opinion and legal counsel i've um, spoken to says they're already violating the deed agreement and by the way the designated handicapped spot on his drawing is on my property. That's my property. It's not a spot. It's not his handicapped spot. Secondly, um, that isn't a public path from the sidewalk up to um, my bakeries when we put it for our guests. It's not a public path. Sidewalk up. So he, there is no garbage, and there will be no garbage if he violates the deed restrictions, paves over or, or patios over the handicapped spot. It's 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 a non-starter. So, and that's really kind of what I wanted to share was I I think it's really cool. I like the big glossy pictures. Han, I work with Hamlin. They've done them for all my restaurants. I just don't think it is right to be able to um, give this particular proposal uh, <laughs> variances that we had to as a bakery. You understand this evening that this is not about any of that, that, that it is really, there's a, there's a special use permit application before us and our, the outcome would be to set a date to take it to public hearing to, to discuss this. So <coughs> none of those issues in, 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 at, at that level of detail uh, would be addressed this evening. Right. You know, so we appreciate everybody's comments. We're glad people want to weigh in on this. But okay. at a public hearing, you know, that's really when we there's additional vetting from, from members of our community as well. Okay. I just want to be yeah. in here. I want to make sure that drawing was accurate and you mm -hmm. understood. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some inaccuracies on the proposal. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank, thank you. Okay. Thanks, Charlie. Yeah. Yes. Lily. Yes, thank you. I, I understand very well, having done this for a while, that it can be very confusing navigating three separate boards when you are trying to open a business. It gets confusing as to which board is doing what, who is responsible, and what you need to present to that board for their consideration. Um, having said that, I am trying to convey to you as much as possible the information specific to this board that we would want to have so that we may move your process along in a timely manner and not get um, bogged down with coming to a meeting and then not having the information that we're looking for. So to that end, uh, given what we have just heard, you may want to um, have for us um, an instrument survey that has been agreed upon by the property owners So because we will not get involved with any line disputes, any property disputes, 
Everything has to be clear cut for us in order to make a decision. If there's any gray areas or any question, we, at least I will not be able to make a decision because I, that, that has to be taken care of first. So, so that, the trash, the handicapped access, the parking, um, you've covered the hours of operation. Uh, I don't see here, however, are there seats inside the cafe? Yep. There are. Uh, there will be seating for um, approximately 40 inside the cafe. Um, just like outside, there will be a communal table for 10 people. Um, there will be a series of tables for four and two people. And then we'll have uh, two banquet areas. Um, we're going to try to get uh, two banquet areas in with um, a total of six between bench seating and chair seating. So there will be approximately three. But we're only seeing the seating on the outside. That's correct. We're not seeing any seating. We, we, haven't, the, uh, we haven't presented that, but if, if this board needs to see that, we will we do. It. We do. We will have it for the next meeting. We need a floor plan. Yeah, floor, floor, yeah, floor, floor plan, plan is basically really what we need. You're right. A floor plan. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And we would also yep. need sp more specific information regarding where your employees will be parking, what plan you have in place. Sometimes business owners have gone to other businesses in the village that have maybe different hours than you do and come to an agreement uh, to find places for their employees to park. Um, I'll think of other things, but I just want to make sure that yeah. I got those covered. Thank you. Yeah. Um, one of the things that's very helpful is um, uh, I'm going to be the, the lessee of the building, uh, but the building owner, Mike Reynolds, is here. And, and, and Mike has a different opinion than Charlie, but we'll let them sort it out. Yeah, exactly right. It's we, not we for us to sort out that at all. <laughs> Excuse me one second here. Yes, Justin. Sure. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mancini, for the presentation. And, and uh, I enjoyed reading through the narrative that you provided about the property as well. I, I think um, in terms of understanding the different parts of the um, the process and, and uh, providing us with the narrative, I, I think that you're... Uh, your application is uh, one of the, the top that I've seen come through the board, so that's uh, very helpful and, and it looks like a great idea. Um, that said, I, I do have some of the concerns that uh, Trustee Lanfear was, was also raising, um, and uh, especially in, in terms of the, um, I had one more question about the property line um, based on the image and, and based on the, uh, the county uh, aerial imagery that I was looking at as well, um, the, the parking and the, the trash management. So first of all, the, the property line, um, it looks like there, it, both in the, the instrument survey that you provided as well as the um, aerial imagery, it seems like there's a part of the, um, uh, the, the area to be developed that's actually municipal property, um, just going north of the, uh, the boundary line there. And I wondered if there was a, a specific... Um, yeah. I looked into this. Yeah, I asked Jeff to look okay. into this. Yeah, I find it, but... What do you, I mean, are we Yeah, have you found municipal because we're well, really trying to. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at this yeah. dotted line right here. Oh, let me change the, I've, I've got the aerial up as well, but this dotted line right here, it seems like some of the, um, just a, a fraction of this on the, on that side of the sidewalk is, um, it seems like this is changing, but it could be village property and it might be easier to see in the aerial. Um, That's that line that we, we have not, at. we've not been able to find anything. When I've looked, um, but I've not had any deed references either. So if there are deed references that would point it in that direction, I think I know the survey you're looking at. Okay. And yeah. I'm not sure that dotted line is clearly denotes village property. I just don't know. Yeah. I don't have any, We've been trying to investigate any that. indication yeah. of that. So, okay. you know, a really valid survey of this property to help. I mean, we have to speak to the property boundary if we had a professional surveyor. Okay, thank, thanks one second. I just want to say that line that you're looking at, it also cuts off a corner of Phoenix. I mean, it's, it's and we have been, but you know, I it goes all the way here. the Phoenix deed. And the Phoenix I mean, deed goes right to the State Street. Yeah. It goes right to State Street. Mm -hmm. It goes right to Main Street. So that line, I don't so know. So that corner, if there is anything there, it, it's a mystery because it's not in the Phoenix deed. Okay. Once again, pre-existing, non-conforming, yes. our mantra. But yes. if we could find some deed reference mm -hmm. sure. that would demonstrate there's something there, then that would be... Did you, any questions down here from the board? 
at this point? No. I, I had a couple of other oh, things. Oh, 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 sorry, go is, there, is there somebody you wanted to speak? Yeah, well, hang on. Yeah, yeah, one second, because I know uh, Chris, Chris Dublin, you wanted to speak. Chris? Yeah. Yeah, name and address, please. My name is Chris Dublin. I live in 23 Washington Avenue. I have to run all the way. I'm going to go to Pittsburgh. I'm the owner of Main Street, and I'm going to go to Main Street. And I just wanted to let you know, as a resident and as a business owner on Main Street, I think it's a terrific plan. I think, uh, uh, you know, in reference to our other business plan, I'm not sure I understand there could be some conflicts of interest there, but I think it's a terrific plan. I think it's going to make connections for our uh, little village to all, all over the place, including uh, uh, around West New York, the Finger Lakes, the Bison community, which is huge in West New York. We could eventually have races beginning and starting here. We could have uh, news covers that we're coming here. We're going to have a charming spot. We're going to have a uh, liaison with exactly. European town, which I think would be uh, suggestive of all kinds of wonderful things about our village. I think it's going to bring more more people to, to Main Street and to, to my shop, which I think is going to be great. And I think it's going to be a great place for us to spend my time to walk to. And we, we walk over there a lot now going to, to the bakery. And uh, um, I've spoken with um, uh, Chuck, a lot about his plan, asked some pointed questions, but whether it, it had some, some holes. I think this is a terrific addition to our community. I think that having this gentleman and this plan here is really, I can't imagine having a, really a better one. And I've seen what, what goes on in, in uh, uh, buildings being left open for, for a very long time around here and, and all over the country. And to have someone willing to bring in this money, bring in this investment with this panache and this, this potential uh, style established place to get out of Thank you. Um, I just want to say again, this isn't a public hearing this evening. This is really a special use permit that's before us. Um, you're certainly going to have the opportunity to um, comment when we do have a public hearing. I and I appreciate your input. I, I, I do. But we're really trying to address, you know, what's here before us this evening. And then, um, let's see, it was Mr. Reynolds wanted to speak. Yeah, um, Mike Reynolds from 5C Street Holdings. Uh, I represent and manage the property uh, on behalf of the owners. Um, I just have some background information about the history of the property, when it was divided, why it has two of the same addresses, and some of that. So I can just if it's that germane, could it, if if it's relevant, you could provide it to the to to the board. Yeah, you know, I, both of you, you know, whatever you all have. But the, anything that's in dispute, again, we said earlier, needs to be sorted out between the two parties. We're not we're not in that business. Uh, we're in the business of taking a look at a special use permit application and <laughs> setting a public hearing. Um, yeah, I'm, and just so, uh, Bob, you understand, I'm, I'm uh, calling on people in the order of which they had raised their hands, and now I'm recognizing you. Oh, thank you. Robert Corby, Southern Washington Avenue. I just wanted to give you some history on why the boundaries are the way they are. If you look at this photograph, when the village used to have a village green, there was a leg of State Street that cut in front of the Phoenix building. That's where the line is. That's where the line is where it remains today. Uh, it may not appear in the deed for the Phoenix building because the edge of State Street was right there uh, when the deed mm -hmm. for the Phoenix building was created. And if you, I believe when the Starbucks application came in in 1997, they did a survey, they showed the boundary then. Also, you could look at the reconstruction drawings for the four corners, which were surveyed, and that would have the boundary of the municipal right of way limits. And I think also when it was State Street way back, there was a um, a horse watering trough and fountain there in front of the Phoenix in front of the Phoenix building. And actually, part of it is in the basement of the Phoenix building. Um, okay. Um, yeah. So I, I actually had a yeah. couple of other things in addition to the the property line there, and uh, learned some interesting history along the way. So thank you. Um, I agree with uh, many of the comments here, and, and um, I think that personally, this is a, a very attractive idea that's uh, aligned with many of the ideas in the, the comp plan. Mr. Mancini, as you pointed out as well, um, I, I think that it's aligned with the comp plan, our active transportation plan, and, and a lot of things that uh, villagers care about. Um, that said, we, we really have to pay close attention to the laws as well, and, and I also um, am a little bit hesitant to get into a situation where uh, everyone, like us, is, uh, you know, like the, the people we've heard tonight, say this is a great idea but there are some parts of the code that uh, don't work with it. Um, and I'd like to make sure that we have um, things like parking uh, issues resolved before we actually send it to, to public hearing, because I think that's something fundamental that's in our code that um, uh, we should address before it's, it's actually brought to the, uh, the public for ideas about the concept. So I, um, and specifically in terms of our code, um, uh, it seems that we're 
um, we have very, uh, we do have some stringent requirements about parking um, and specifically along the lines of the special use permit, it says um, that it can't fail to provide adequate parking to support the proposed use without causing a parking, parking shortage or other problems for nearby businesses and or residents. Um, and I think that there's, uh, that's something that might even go beyond some of the uh, area variance requirements when it goes in front of the, uh, the planning board. And I'm guessing we're, we're talking about um, a variance being required, an area of variance for the parking yeah. in this case. Yes. Um, and so I, I want to make sure that we're not, you know, when the, when, the, um, uh, when the planning board is looking at that issue, they're looking at the uh, impacts on the community and, and uh, you know, they've got a checklist of things to look at. Um, but I think that the special use permit actually goes beyond that and specifically talks about the impact on the neighbors um, due to the intensity of the use. So I'm wondering if, um, uh, we can address that issue and also the issue of the, the trash management. It seems like this is something that um, is a legal issue and an agreement with um, other people sharing the, the uh, usage of the trash facilities. And specifically, my proposal here would be that, um, you know, I'm concerned that we're bringing this in front of the public. Everybody's excited about this, but there's something with our code that just doesn't work out in terms of the requirements of the special use permit. Um, so my proposal would be that um, the board asks our attorney to look at the um, the agreement that is reached uh, and the terms of the the deed uh, that are brought in front of us to make sure that issue is resolved before we look at the other discretionary items um, required by the special use permit to bring it to a public hearing. Jeff, do you have any? No, I'm happy to do that. On, you know, I'm happy to those. do that. Um, people get me this stuff. We can do it um, before. You know, public hearing. Mm -hmm. I think the, the, the variance parking issue is a little trickier because they're going, I mean, the, the, in, the, in the variance work, the ZBA is going to be looking at nearly the, the same issues this board will look at in the context of the special permit. And I don't think well, again, I haven't done I haven't done the research, but my my conclusion would be that the board of trustees could not, in the special permit re review, overrule the variance work of the ZBA because that would be us acting in an appellate authority over them, right. and I don't think that's appropriate or, or legal. So I understand the thought of. Maybe the special permit's broader, yeah. but really, in the variance work, the ZBA should be looking at much those same issues. When are they going before the ZBA? This, I think. What, April 9th. April 9th, okay. Yeah, I, I would agree that if the, the variance is granted, then um, there's not a whole lot for us to say yeah. about the, uh, the parking. Yeah, that's what, that was, I thought about this when I, when I saw it coming. Yeah, and I think that's the conclusion. I mean, I'm thinking of it in terms of the sequencing of things. Yeah. You know? I mean, I think that the April, it's April 5th or April 9th. 9th? 5th? Sorry. The April 5th meeting will resolve whether or not there's going to be a variance. <clears throat> and you could schedule a public hearing, and if the variance does not occur, you'd either adjourn the public hearing or cancel the public hearing. Uh, it's up to the board. It's entirely up to the board, but that kind of sequencing we've done in the past for right. other projects. We, right. We've lined up a public hearing and the thought that the precondition would happen or not happen. Okay, so Lily. Oh, I just have one. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, I, 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 just dates. I was going to ask about the dates too, saying, in terms of sequence of things. Here's here. my question: That once the public hearing is opened, then the clock is ticking. Um, who? As far as making a decision. On whom? On, on a special use permit. No. How long of a window of time is it? On. Um, there is not a window of time. No. If this board fails to make a decision, the applicant would have a mandamus proceeding available to it. In other words, if you're not making a decision in a timely fashion, they have the right to go to court and say, make a decision. It's I'd like to avoid that. No, 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 it's, it's with uh, subdivision, but it's not automatic approval. So, but let's start, what would a date be then for a public hearing, just so we're starting to, if, if there's a sequence here that, 
Looking at it the calendar, the first available date that this could go to public hearing is April 13th. Um, we have our second meeting of the month. It would be April 27th. So or, or April, okay, one of those two. And, and then the 13th aligns with after the planning, we would have that information of what happened well before the And meeting. then it is, again, to speak to sequencing only, totally not my decision. Mm -hmm. Um, it puts it ahead of the HPB meeting in April, which mm -hmm. the HPB cannot make any decisions until everyone else Everything can make decisions. HPB comes in at the end, end of it all, basically. Right, but they've, they've been in front of the HPB for information. Information, yeah. So that they wouldn't get to the end and the HPB say no. Right, okay, I mean, okay. So, you know, the, the understanding here is um, even if we set a date for public hearing, you don't get a variance on the on the 5th, then we, we, we would not hold the hearing. Right. We, yeah. So sort of no harm, no foul, depending on the outcome from another board. You're going to stay in. Because we have the budget um, coming in. Perfect. <laughs> Trustee Lanfear is going to be gone for the 27th. Oh, that's Never. right. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. No, no, that's okay. So, so we could go for the 13th. 13. We have the time. We have time to post it and get it taken care yeah. of. Yeah. Okay. Justin, you had your hand up. I uh, just wanted to reiterate that I, I believe this should be conditional upon um, the acceptance by our attorney of mm -hmm. the um, uh, agreement regarding the, the trash management. Well, I'm also interested in, in, I mean, if I were the board, I'd be interested in, you know, where, what is their property line? Yes. Uh, and and uh, review the property line. That, that should be an emotion. Yep. Yeah. Whoever wants to make one. <laughs> she said looking down the table. Well, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm not sure the two of you can join. Uh, I know, but we have we need to have that information. Right. No, no, but you could, right. What, what saying, are you thinking? So, I'm saying if, if the board is not predisposed to set the public hearing now, yeah, uh, they could do two motions, or they could make the same motion. So you know, yeah, yeah. We we have a deadline date. We can give them a April seventh to have the materials to us for review. Would that be enough time for you to look at? I would like. I mean, I would. I think there's going to be some back and forth with their attorneys. Mm -hmm. Kind of stuff. So, I mean, it, if we're to do the hearing on the 13th, that's a long time. Right, but so, I'm thinking the sooner they, they can put me in touch with their attorneys with surveys and so on and so forth, the better. The board has these questions that will we'll answer. I mean, the other thing that we can do is, is look at the, um, uh, have everyone follow up with our attorney and um, consider this matter uh, to, to schedule the public hearing at first meeting in April. Yeah. To make sure that these are in place. The board wants to do. I thought that's what one of yeah. the possibilities we already discussed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I yeah. think I would prefer that since it's. Um, it seems like there are a few moving pieces here. I'd like to get those taken care of before we move it to a public hearing. So don't even set the date. I would not set the date. I would just okay, so for our attorneys to follow up as a We might be in a better position on the 13th to set the date. Is what you're suggesting? Yes. I mean, again, totally your call, but. I think we can answer that question between now and the yeah, I, I and think have, have, the, have the information available on the 13th. And if the board is not satisfied with the answers and the information, just like when you're ever not satisfied with information produced for a special permit, mm -hmm. you either adjourn it or deny the special permit or whatever it is that you want to do on the 13th. Yeah, even if we set the date. And we don't have all the information. We don't. We adjourn it. We don't have that hearing. What? But if, if, if everything lines up and, and the information is provided, you we can, do can it move can ahead. Do it. You can do it both ways. Whatever. I mean, you, whatever one way or the other. Wants. Yeah, I, I think the to me at least the the danger with scheduling the the public hearing is that then we carry through the public hearing. And we get a lot of people like our, like many of ourselves who are very excited about the concept, mm -hmm. but there might be something legally that doesn't work, and and it's tough to untangle those uh, at times. And I, I would just rather solve. We would have the information prior to the hearing, and then it, and then cancel the hearing. Am I correct? Or adjourn the hearing. Or, I'm sorry, adjourn the hearing. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, so I, I think, and that would be publicly noticed as well. You know. 
Just oh, yes, Chuck. Um, so I, I very much appreciate this um, uh, this debate. Uh, my my position would be um, that let's try to resolve this um, with Jeff and the building lawyers and uh, <coughs> Simmons lawyers. Um, and if the zone the planning and zoning has concerns on the fifth bay wall and they don't approve. Um, and by the 5th of April, there hasn't been a resolution of these two things. Um, I can assure you, I will ask that the public hearing be adjourned and postponed until these things can be resolved. Because I'm not, mm -hmm. I mean, I have no interest in, in, in a public hearing unless the, the matters that are of concern haven't been completely buttoned up and the Planning and Zoning Board hasn't been, hasn't viewed our application very favorably. So that, my request would be that we, Pencil in the 13th, and by April 5th, um, if, if everything's not in place, we'll pull. I'll, I'll pull. I mean, you don't have to pull. I'll pull it because um, I, I do not want to go to a public hearing unless these things are buttoned up. I mean, I would think that everybody present here this evening is in agreement that we need to resolve these outstanding matters. I think you know, so we're starting from that point. And I think now, really, what's back to the board is whether or not we do set the date for the hearing and. Uh, you know, my thought is if we set the date, and as you say, on, on the 5th, things don't work out, we simply, the hearing is adjourned, period. You know, we don't have the information, things are not resolved. Why would why would anybody want to move forward at that point? You know, it, it is as, just simply as a practical matter, you know. I hear you, and my experience with these permits has pushing me to ask to um, err on the side of caution because of the appearance um, that the board uh, has to endure of being um, difficult to work with because things are have come be before us before and, and before other boards we call not a complete application and we really need a very complete application prior to be opening the public hearing otherwise it just makes us look as if we're being difficult. Mm -hmm. So I would like it to go as smoothly as possible. Mm -hmm. And to that end, I would like to have all the assurances that every detail has been addressed that mm -hmm. is a concern um, for the for the village. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's that, what I that said. That would be acceptable for me. Um, if, we, if we wanted to have another information only meeting on the 13th, review where we are, and if the board is Supported at that point in time, then we schedule the hearing for the 27th. I mean, okay, that's, that's I know. we appreciate that. No, thank you. Thank you for thank you. being flexible on that because you know we're hearing you know the comments. Renee and or Dan, any anything you wanted to weigh in on or acceptable? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, I mean, I think that's fair. You know, let's dot eyes, cross T's. I, I appreciate that as yeah. well. So if we have the meeting, I'm, uh, I'm certainly happy to uh, hear it on the agenda on the 13th as well. Um, yeah. And uh, that would give us enough. Time to notice for the end of the month meeting. Yes, the board yeah. made yeah. the wise decision to pass the law. We right. only had <laughs> five days. Five days. Uh, I do have a question from Peggy Carabaris, mm -hmm. 81 South Street. I tried to answer it, but I don't know the total answers. Um, she's questioning what variances they need with the zoning board. I know one is parking. I don't know what the other two are. Do we know? Mm -hmm. uh, it's certainly the, the key one is parking. Uh, may pre may be a pre-existing lot, non-conforming lot that they're uh, not expanding the, the use, but they they still have to get the variance. I don't know what the third would be because I don't really I haven't been involved in that at all. I I know Megan was advertising it. Do you uh, know? I can speak sure. to that. Okay. Sure. 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 Yeah, so and this may be helpful to the special use permit. We apply for uh, uh, four variances: fence heights, both grade and parking. Um, we've, we've applied for variance for lot coverage and we've applied for a variance uh, for, for the parking. So our intent was the you know, um, special use for specifically for outdoor seating. Um, that helps to verify your question, Justin. Thank you. Well, on. The special permit is for everything. It's not just for the outdoor seating. I, I just want to make sure the yeah. applicant understood that, that the special permit covers the whole Everything. use. That's why we need the floor plan as well. You know, we need to see in entirety what is happening on that. Okay. Yep. And 
Well, one other thing I want to make sure the applicant understands is that the HPV does not meet again until May something. Okay. Yeah. Um. All right, but I mean, I think we've kind of, you know, had a good discussion, and um, I appreciate the flexibility and, you know, the good thoughts from, from the trustees here as well. So uh, going forward, then, it looks like we've got some homework to do. Everybody has homework assignments at this point. Uh, we, we can uh, put you on the agenda for the 13th and bring it right back to the board and uh, see how we will, you know, move forward or not. How's that? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Don't forget your time. Oh, yeah, so we've got a slide here. Oh, oopsie, do it all over the Okay. Okay, uh, thanks, everybody. Mike Reynolds. I think that's. Is that the different Mike Reynolds? It's his son. Oh, it's his son? Yeah. Oh my God! I know. Yeah, he's all grown up. I know he's all grown up. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Next up on the agenda yeah. is uh, a non-municipal yeah. permit application for Pittsburgh yeah, Food Tours. It. Yes. Um, I'm representing okay. Sherry Davenport again. Um, Ms. Davenport's been in front of the boards before. Nothing's really changed with her application. We've approved this the last couple of years. The only stipulation, again, she has asked is the insurance, depending on okay. if she can open or not open. I'm liking to think we're okay and she'll be able to move forward this year. She was able to move forward the last couple of years. So that's pretty much it. Is there any questions? And I do realize that the application is in a photo. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I asked her to submit the original to me so we have a question on that. I kind of like the job. Okay. And, and there's no waiver needed because it's not. No, it's, funny. it's pretty far out. Okay. okay. All righty. Um, any any questions or any comments from the board? I'll entertain a motion. Anybody? I will make a motion that we approve the um, non-municipal or the non-municipal use permit for Pittsburgh food tours. Um, I don't have the day. I don't have anything in front of me oh. for uh, June as presented. Uh, through May through November of 2023. Thank you. Uh, with the same conditions as previously um, approved. I'll second. Oh, okay. You've got it right Wow, it's a tie. I don't know. Okay, roll call, please. Trustee Stetzer? Aye. Trustee Keating? Aye. Trustee Lanfear? Aye. Trustee Likett? Aye. Mayor Plummer? Aye. Motion passes. Okay, we have food tours. Uh, next up, we have a non municipal permit application for. Uh, the town of Pittsburgh for Paddle and Poor. This is actually an amendment to the existing permit uh, that we granted them for this event. Uh, you see in your packet they would like to be able to use the parking lot behind Village Hall uh, for some additional activities um, for kids, I think mostly. Um, and uh, let's see, there'll be trash receptacles and you know everything will be sort of airdrop taken care of and they'll clean everything up and. They just need the extra space, I think, is really what they're looking for. Um, I don't know if there's anything else to add. I mean, it's pretty straightforward no, in I'm terms of what they'd like to do. Yeah. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the non-municipal use. Or is it amendment, we're saying? Yes. We're amending the Are we current expansion? No, just, just how, what do we say? It's a new one. Okay. It's a new one. Okay, it's a new it's one. It's just one. modified oh, slightly. Oh, modified. Okay. The request is modified slightly from last okay. year. Oh, okay. Uh, but but this is, okay. it's a it's an annual. You have to do it annual. Okay. It's a little. Yeah. Can you just tell them to move? It's the, the little noisy. The talking oh, in the hall. If you could just. Yeah. Thank you. I'll uh, make a motion to approve the non-municipal use permit for the town of Pittsburgh with paddle and board as presented. For 2023. 2023. Okay. <laughs> we have a second. Roll call, please. Okay, Trustee Spencer? Aye. Trustee Keating? Aye. Trustee Lankett? Aye. Trustee Lampier? Aye. Mayor Plummer? Aye. Motion passes. Okay. Uh, next up, um, is, is Scott Harder on, on the line here? He is. Do we have Scott? Unless I lost him at Unless some point. Unless we lost him at some point. Line. I know. Okay, next up are um, the bid results. We have these in the packet and they're posted. 
Uh, the first one is for South Wood and Sutherland Street Engineering. And um, Zach, thanks for staying and you know helping us with this as well. If Scott, are you? No, oh, he's, he's being he's transitioning. He's transitioning. Okay. okay. He's moving from one place to another. Oh, question. He's coming. Hopefully, he's coming. He's changing from his alien. Yeah, do you want to pull a chair up and just come up? It might be easier, you know, just so we can talk through it. Still segueing. He's. I see him. I don't know if he's seeing the request. Okay. So Zach is sending him a quick. Oh, a text. Okay. okay. To bring. Okay. Him. Yeah. Switch over from Netflix and join the meeting. Yeah. Maybe you want to call him. Oh, okay. wait, wait. Okay. He just left my screen. We have movement. He's coming into being a panelist. He's okay. here. Okay. We have Scott. S Scott, uh, hello. I'm in Rangoon. <laughs> there he is. Hi, Scott. Sorry, I got up for a minute. I stepped away and naturally I was on. Okay. Well, we can hear you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're we're uh, looking at the Southwood and Sutherland Street uh, bid results. And if you'd like to kind of weigh in on things. How many did First, South and Wood, not to jump in, we only received one bid. Okay. This is it. Thanks. Yeah. And the first time out, we didn't even receive anything, and then we added on Sutherland. I think you guys were called. Yeah. Okay. Um, Scott, do you want to kick this off, or? Um, yeah, we we did hear back from uh, one uh, proposer, and then uh, Zach and I met with them um, last week, I believe it was, and we reviewed what they had proposed and indicated some other things that the village was interested in. Um, they replied back to us today with um, a, a revised proposal that had a pretty large number associated with it. And so we <laughs> bonded back to that and said, you know, could you um, separate Sutherland from that? Let's see if we see what number we might arrive at if you were to do that. Um, haven't gotten a, a number back based on that request yet. Um, I, think I, think, I think I can say that Zach and I um, felt that they were a good firm, that they were qualified, um, and that even when you look at the initial numbers, um, those are those are pretty high numbers from what we're used to. But I think that's the way it is in today's market. If you retain a, a consultant like that, you're going to be looking at those kinds of numbers. Mm -hmm. And we do they have the revised numbers that were sent at the last? Well, that's what I want to make sure. Scott, you did get that last email that came in late. From, I, I got one at like three o'clock this afternoon. Four sixteen. There was one after four o'clock where, where she broke out South and Wood. Okay, I don't think I have that one. I was, like I can search for it. Um, do you have it? there to share with the board then? Yeah. yeah. Do we have any extra copies for board? I think I oh, you passed it out. Okay. You got you folks have it. Okay. Wasn't because it, it kind of came in at the 
11th hour. Scott, it was addressed to you. You should have it. It was in response to your uh, you asking Caitlin to break down the numbers uh, by the, the street project. Yes, I see it here. It ended up in my spam folder somehow. So that's why I didn't see it. Um, hang on just a second. Soak it in. <laughs> yeah. Then once you have a moment. <laughs> Um, yeah, just, you know, for the board, the request was made when we got the giant number. Um, could they break out Sutherland? Because remember, we added Sutherland on, yeah. you know, so now we're, we just asked them to break out Sutherland and just only look at South and Wood, you know, those two separately, just to see yes. what, to what the difference would be. Our next three road projects for the road schedule um, are South, which is, you know, that's been on the agenda for six years now. Um, Sutherland, which is, you know, right behind it, and then Shane Place, our three largest rows that also require the most attention. Um, and so to try to sweeten the pot to uh, lure someone in to bid on it, we lumped uh, Sutherland in with South and Wood Street. Um, and their initial response was uh, the proposal then we asked them to start um, defining a road by road project so we can have more accurate numbers to go off of for this year and then tying into next year with Sutherland if we're able to. So what you're seeing is a reflection of that. So South and Wood looking at about $860,000 total for them to come through, engineer it, and, and, um, inspect it, and um, put out the bid for the project and also uh, the construction, that's the construction costs of that project. And they have a 20% variance on that, am yeah. I correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Give or take. So, um, and then Sutherland, you can see the numbers for that as well. Um, that is uh, a, a pretty high um, estimate as far as I'm concerned, um, given that. I, I think they're assuming that we're going to be replacing all of the drainage structures on the road, which we may be able to line them per our uh, term contract. Mm -hmm. We have a scanex for our sewer lining, um, which would lower that substantially, yeah. um, but it's still going to be quite expensive. So, Zach, does this mean, I mean, originally we put more into it because the first time we set the bid out, we didn't get any responses. So we thought, let's make it a bigger project right. to yeah. make it more attractive. Mm -hmm. Are they open to now um taking sutherland out of this is that an option or um, are we, did you just ask them to split it up so that we have better numbers for planning purposes ask them to split it up so we have better numbers um to, to discuss um and also hoping that we can push sutherland off till next year um it would save us a lot of money if we were to do all of it at once because of mobilization costs that are associated with the construction of it um, and any contractor that comes through and sees, you know, a mile and a half of road to be um, milled and paved, more or less, with all the other aspects to it, um, versus just, you know, a half mile here and three quarters of a mile there. Um, so we would still be having them do the whole thing, just splitting it up? In yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, Not removing Sutherland from it and then yeah. putting that out to bid later. Okay. Right. All right. I wanted to understand. Thank you. Yep. But for the board tonight, what you're looking at approving is GPI handling the engineering. The overall construction costs, we're not sure of. I mean, they gave us, I'm going to guess their estimate is pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, you're not approving that construction cost yet because that would still have to go out of the bid. Okay. And mm -hmm. I'm hoping that a miracle will take place and all of the construction costs will drop by 50% yeah. <laughs> in the world. But that's not realistic. I realize that. But tonight, the board's consideration is the um engineering so we're looking at the ninety three thousand. is that correct i think it's a little bit more with the add-ins am i right yes there? i believe it was um 135 total uh there was a range there am i right scott between um was it 96 and 135 something like that yeah i don't have i'm trying to find the sheet because there was twenty three thousand with the add-ins and okay so okay. 
So like, give us like, give us the numbers, please, if we, because I, we're not. Some of us aren't. Playing. Wait, here we go. Is it, yeah, it is it? okay. If you're looking, if you're looking at the packet, it's page five of the packet. So is that at ninety two thousand there? Yeah, on the fee structure. Yeah. Yeah, and the initial lump sum total was ninety three thousand. Yeah, that's what I was looking. Yeah, at. yeah. Okay. And then so we had the add-ins that were in addition. The twenty three. What did I just add-in do? Twenty three thousand one hundred. Is that right, Scott? Um. Well, I'm looking at the email that came from Caitlin, where she broke out South and Wood, and she shows one hundred and twenty thousand for design, uh, bid support, and construction inspection. I. Um. Is. I'm I'm not um, clear on where that other number is coming from. Is that coming from the proposal that they sent in? Yeah, their initial bid was ninety three thousand. Right. Okay. And the second docs I received yesterday, I believe it was, were the additional optional service total of twenty three thousand one hundred. Um, I'm I'm not I'm not one hundred percent certain what the what the number is. Quite honestly. Yeah, now that we're looking, we're it's coming, two different numbers. It's two it different looks numbers. Like they have completely separated both road projects. Yeah. yeah. But yet, and I take this back, total lump sum 175 to 195. <laughs> That's what I'm What seeing. page are you on? Um, page number. That's with the letter? That's with the fee schedule from the additional. What pa but can you give me the page oh, number? It should be. It's not printed on that page. Oh, never mind. It's the. Oh, page three. Thank you. I can't see anymore with my glasses. Okay, so. I don't think it's that clear. It's if you go A, B, C, D, and it goes total lump sum. Oh, I you have to, page three of a different. Yeah, it's the first one. Okay. Let's get any more confusing. I'm not quite sure I have doesn't have it. I'm sorry. Here. Yes. Thank you. I don't know why I'm not finding it. First. Yeah. You see the total lump sum between one. Yeah. I think that's the number we're looking at. Okay. Total lump sum here, folks. See where we're going? A couple hundred thousand. Yeah. That would be more in line yeah, with the breakout. Yeah, for both. Oh, for, 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 for okay. both right. South and Wood and yeah. right. Well, well, well. Yeah, that's before we do anything else. That's not in the budget. <laughs> no. no yeah. Well, that, that's that was the discussion that we had, you know, quite a while back about when we do this, it would be using a ban. Yeah. You know, and that would, you know, the, that's our way forward there is to never, get capital improvements. There is no way with the budget yeah. to yeah. budget this. Okay. Uh, then we would have to figure out how that much to ban. We'd have to. So I think the, the action here. I'm just guessing. Mm -hmm. If the board is, if the board gives me the directive to reach out to Bernie Don again on the banning, um, you can't do the road without the engineering. I'm gonna guess. I'm just. I'm reaching there. <laughs> Um, we need to know and to get idea of what banning that the whole project would cost. Yeah. What's involved, yeah. What is involved. Mm -hmm. The other piece of this, which is going to come at the next meeting, which I know a couple of our members, I'm, I'm going to pretend you're interested. I know you are. It's the back entrance. We're going to be bringing that forward. The bad news on that is that did come in over budget as well. More than double. Yeah. This Way more than double. Very sad. Um, that is also going to be a ban. It has to be a ban because, again, taking 200, at least 200,000 from the village budget is not foreseeable. But we need to, again, do the repairs. So I'm going to be bringing those, that information. We've been trying to work with the construction company to see if we can get those numbers down so it's paddable. So either way, to move forward with banning or bonding, whatever we end up doing for these projects, I need to talk to our ban, Bernie Donigan, who yeah. handles that, and our bond council because at the end of the day, it would be a legal matter. It would be the way forward for it us. Would be, to be so able. we can get the numbers and what mm -hmm. your paybacks would be 
what mm -hmm. the total yes. cost of doing mm -hmm. this. So with the the blessing of the board for me to do that, mm -hmm. I don't want to call them and incur a cost without the direction. Sure. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I agree with enough that cash. <laughs> I mean, um, it'd be a lot on a charge card too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the first yeah. one today almost. I, I had a seizure. Yeah. yeah. I, I guess, um, and, and it, so it seems that some kind of a, a ban is, is um, likely a, a part of the future of, of getting these projects done. Um, but I would like to, since we are very close to the end of this budget cycle, um, and we're talking about varying levels of, of tax increases, it seems that based on the revenues that we have coming in, we may need more or less of a ban for the initial stages of the project. So I guess what I'm concerned about is that if we just tell the, the person to do the, the forecasting for how much the ban is going to cost, and then that changes based on the uh, reserve funds that we end up with at the end of the budget cycle in a couple of, in, in about a month, um, that there would have to be rework to, to his. I think we can get a set different numbers. I, I don't mm -hmm. think it's that much work. I, I mean, I'm not going to go and say, just give me 750,000. Right. I'm going to say, you know, give me this much, this much, a variance of mm -hmm. amounts. So we have all the information. I think that's the smartest way to go about it. I mean, yeah. do I hope we have a surplus and mm -hmm. we can add to our fund balance this year? Absolutely. Is our fund balance doing better? Yes, mm -hmm. it is. Do I think we should take a little bit? Maybe. Do I want to take a lot? No. Um, that's where we had the discussion on looking at our fund balance policy again. Um, some way I think we, between all of it, we can rework it. And if you're comfortable, I mean, you're welcome to meet with me, with the bond yeah. and people yeah. to go over the numbers. Do you have thoughts on um, oh, our? Yeah, well, I, I, I guess what I'm, since we're gonna be adopting the budget in like a month here, right? Um, what is the timeline for accepting this? Because I'm just thinking that we're, we're all going to have a different view of the overall finances once that budget is adopted. So I'm wondering if instead of, um, you know, does this expire if we don't respond to it in a couple of weeks? Or what would happen if we said, you know, we're, we've almost got our budget adopted. Uh, we want to do that and have a week to get together with our, our band person and then um, tell you, you know, May 1st, um, if, if we're going to proceed with this and, and with what part. I'm sure they'd be open to that. Um, I, I'm afraid that if we drag our feet too long on this, being that they were the only um, firm to respond to it, that we might lose them. So, uh, Scott, back me up on this. Um, I, the proposal does not state that there is a given time frame that we have to respond by. And after our conversation the other day with them, I think they would be willing to uh, to hang on by can guarantee for how long. I think they understand this is a big number. Yeah. It's, it's a, a big number for us. To get yeah, you know, <laughs> things settled. So maybe we could ask for a, a date, let's call it June 30th or June 1st, and get them to commit um, giving us that window? The only reason why I would say that's kind of far out mm -hmm. is to try to get a contractor in to have this done, this work started and hopefully completed before the season ends. I see. Yeah, which is another problem. <clears throat> but again, getting back to where we are with the tentative budget, and you're right, you know, we're well, tweaking okay. and tuning and where are, you know, we're kind of we're close. Um, <clears throat> in terms of I think where we're headed, I don't, the degree of variation mm -hmm. that would happen, if I'm understanding, is not significant enough, potentially. Uh, to raise some more additional funds for the projects through the budget, well, that's going to be a board decision if we look at that and look at where our fund balance yeah. is and where we want to take. Not looking at the numbers, but, I can't. No, 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 but I'm just thinking what, what, you know, we need to get the information either way for a ban. Correct. We need, I mean, that's, that we, I think, do it's we all agree on that? Like, yeah. Correct. It so, will take a little bit of time because that's a whole process. Yeah. Um, first, we would get the numbers from the band people, mm -hmm. bring them to the board. They would say, you know what, this looks good. Then we would approach bond council, which isn't Jeff. Mm -hmm. We would put that information into a document. You would put it out, and then it's subject to 30 days. So it's going to take the time to get the financing all settled. So we could start in on that piece of you starting to gather that information 
still be doing our work on the budget and at least we're we're kind of moving at least informationally some things along uh, right I can't what I can't tell you the board right now is affordability mm -hmm. right yeah, what so I can tell to... you our existing debt we're down to a couple yeah. after this year we're down to two more payments which is great we only have a hundred thousand left on that outside of the refinancing and we mm -hmm. have one of those trucks is coming off very shortly as well so our debt levels are getting very low so it's a good time mm -hmm. I also remind the board that this is good debt even though I think it's Mm -hmm. doubled in costs easily unnecessarily in my mind but it's for capital improvement we're investing capital back into our village I, I understand where you're going with that but, but we need to know what the number is going to be how long can we bond this well then I would like the board to entertain you know giving you the direction to at least reach out to Correct. Donegan to start to let's get the pull that information together Correct. and, this and, and just as right we need to you know we're looking at our budget you know we're moving forward and so we know where we are. Just yeah. so you want to work with me in the numbers to provide yeah. to Bernie Donegan, I'd be happy to sit with you and we can go over what we have in fund balance, what we can look at at the taxes and develop a plan. I mean, I want to bring this reasonably to the mm -hmm. board so it's accomplishable because we got a lot of work into this and obviously we need to do the road work. There's no way right, it's going to get put off another year and it's yeah. already it's it's like six four or years. five times yeah. more expensive than we were when we Yes, yeah, the problem. Yeah. Everything we're finding out is just wow. And then, sorry, go ahead. Well, I, I guess um, my concern here is just that we have a, a quite fluid situation with the budget as we move towards the adoption, and I don't want to waste money um, with imprecise direction to the person who's who's researching loans. So, how much money are we looking to spend on consulting to get this process started? I can. Give them a quick call and let you know. I yeah. I don't. They I'm honestly working with them in the past. It's just really a. They could give me a range of figures. I don't foresee that being an issue with them. I mean, it's not a lot of heavy them. lifting for them at this point. Yeah, they're just punching in the numbers. Yeah. Of what the being amount would be. Uh -huh. So we're talking about less than a thousand dollars to give preliminary information. On that I can't promise because mm -hmm. we haven't reached out to them in a while. Yeah, it has been a while actually. I I you know. If you want to give me a why don't we cap point, it? Why don't we can give, give a direction and cap it? You know, does that make sense? Up to two thousand, two thousand dollars to to reach out to <clears throat> obtain the information. Uh, and if about for some reason, there's going to be more. I'll let the board know, and yeah. I'm open for. Yeah, okay, and that's that's with a, a range based on um, reasonable uh, fund usage for the project to uh, yes. get started. Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so directed then. Do we need a motion? Since you're a motion, I would. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve an outreach to Tony uh, Donegan, uh, capture the maximum of two thousand dollars to provide us information on a ban based on uh, reasonable usage of fund balances. Is there a second, please? I'll second. Uh, roll call, please. Trustee Stetzer? Aye. Trustee Keating? Aye. Trustee Lanfair? Aye. Trustee Likett? Aye. Mayor Plummer? Aye. Thank you. And in the meantime, I will keep in contact with the um, <coughs> GPI and see if they can wait till May. Yeah. 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 Thank you. So they know we're moving in a direction. Yeah. Not like um, I think, you know, as long as, as they have the scent that we are going to, you know, mm -hmm. ask their. Their, their work for something, then yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, <coughs> next up, we have the, the bid um, on the evaluation, planning, and design of improvements for the Arboretum and the uh, DPW uh, land parcel. Okay. Um, real quick, I'm yeah. sorry, we had sure. a question from the public. Oh, sure. For Sutherland Street, how will this road be coordinated with the removal of street trees in order for Mark IV to lay the new water lines for 75 and Rock? <clears throat> That's um, removal of street trees. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen. It's, it's, with, it's on the other side of the trees, they're, and it's on the. Isn't they're going to be doing directional boring, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're going to be able to do drill on the ground yeah. without having to remove trees, um, and that might be changed anyway. Um, okay. With them, we had a meeting with them today that. Um, we let them know that the possibility of repaving Sutherland um, 
in 2024 uh, that that might change their plans of being able to put the water main on the east side of the road rather than the west side of the road, um, which would run parallel to the curbing. Um, in some spots it would be in the tree line, some spots it would be in the road, depending on where that falls. Um, so it might not even be necessary to be on the west side of the road, boring underneath the trees through there. Okay. So, but we're it's still in discussion. Looking, look, it, yeah. Okay. Because honestly, we don't even know where we're at with soil with, with repaving something yeah, yet. Yeah. Yeah. It's a long ways out. So we're just exploring different options. Okay. Okay. Thanks. All right. Okay. Okay. So now we're we're on the uh, second bid here. Scott, you still with us? Still here. Okay. Um, do you want to you know start off on this this particular bid that came in? Um, yeah, we as I as I think the board knows, we solicited proposals for the uh, the work on that project that involves the development of the land and, and addressing both uses, the arboretum and uh, the DPW. We we've developed a, a draft scope that the consultants replied to. Uh, I went through the um, proposals that came in. Um, these two seem to be high numbers. Um, the the difference that I saw between um, uh, the two proposals between Labella and Fisher, the, the difference I thought was um, Fisher proposed to take the project um, to the boards and present it to the boards, but they didn't necessarily um, present that they were going to get the associated approvals, uh, whereas Labella indicated that they were and the difference is, um, you know, roughly thirty thousand dollars, I think, between the two proposals. Also, Fisher indicated that they wanted um, to, uh, they wanted the village to do to do the survey. It would be required in more detail for the topographic aspect of things, whereas Labella um, had included that in their proposals. I understand it. So I think if you if you look at the difference between the two when you um, associate approximate costs, you probably would note that they come in about the same number, which would seem to be kind of a high number to me. Um, but, but that's what we have. Okay. Questions from the board? Well, yeah, Justin? Just to, um, to recap, I, I think that the last time that we spoke about this at a public meeting, um, we were talking about deciding as a, a board where the, the boundary is between the two parcels and, and then uh, kind of going from that point. So I guess, um, I, I think that we made a lot of progress on that. I think that we have to circle back and finish those discussions. Sort of brought back internally, um, yeah. Yeah, basically what we had is that, um, you know, it, we have a, a map, a line where it makes sense that most of the land is accounted for in the Arboretum. And I think that um, I've got to talk with uh, Zach and, and uh, um, Scott and Jeff again and, and uh, see where we stand. But I, I wouldn't, I don't think that we have this in the budget right now. And, and I think the discussion is going in a little bit of a different direction at this point. Yeah, so I, I, I'm in agreement with that. I mean, you know, because you guys have been doing some good work, really sorting through things. Um, I, we just, yeah, I yeah, think I we think need we to hold off. So yeah, I think it is. Spending a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, right. we, any, yeah. I mean, I think any other. Yeah. I, I would just say I, I think um, I think those uh, proposals were kind of helpful in, in establishing a, a baseline. But besides that, I, I think they also say to me anyway, that the more we can do in house and making it easy for the consultant to uh, jump on board of what the, the village is kind of drafted, I, I think that will reduce that number. Um, I think right now that it's not super clear to the consultants uh, what what they may need to do, and mm -hmm. I think their fees reflect that. I agree. Thanks, Scott. Yeah. Yep. So I, I mean, I think we're kind of all in agreement, you know, that we we have a bit of a different path, and it doesn't involve about a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Okay. Alrighty. So uh, yes. Question of procedure, Jeff. Should they rescind the bid? Yeah. How do? What would the for next steps on this? If, you know. Well, they're not going to accept it. Right, so we're going to we'll notify them. Yeah, just notify them. Not accept it. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, we'll work on we'll work with that. Well, that'll be our action item. Okay. Okay. I, I think we should contact them and certainly thank them for uh, the the effort they put into responding to us. Both those proposals I thought were well done. They they certainly spent some overhead on creating those for us. So. Yeah. I also I also think we should inform them that they will certainly be contacted. Um, you know, as we proceed to the next level, perhaps after we reconcile some things in house. That sounds good. Yeah, I, I think really that's that's a good way to go. So that'll be the action item. All right. Okay. Okay. Any anything else on this particular item? Okay. Next up, um, pedestrian safety on Monroe Avenue. And Dan, you had received that email from um, one of our residents. Yeah. Is it um, Oh, is is it it? 55. 55. Yeah. Ben? Yeah, Ben Richards, yeah. So uh, it's pretty clear what he's asking for. Just I said I'd bring it to the board. And... Have we asked him to? This is a, um, so those for those of you following along at home, this is the dreaded intersection of Sutherland yeah. and Monroe that the previous administration for decades asked to fix our all our plans have identified it as a as a problem area um, when the previous mayor and I sat down with DOT when they came through with their original restriping plan we pointed out when they were going to make some adjustments to that um, because it used to kind of just be a driveway where you could accidentally if you were driving a car um, go up over um, so they fixed it a little bit and improved it but we underscored that that's still not enough. We've been asking for a light there. We've been asking for stop signs, whatever. Um, and we are not granted that. And again, um, we underscored it with this new mayor too, that mm. we still have problems there. We put a crossing guard there, which does help the that kids help who are the kids. crossing. Um, and it helps those of us who live there because um, you know that's when traffic is, is terrible. Um, still nothing is being done there. Have we asked this? Um, this resident to also reach out to DOT. I mean, we need to continue our advocacy there, but but it, it helps when we do get the residents yeah. involved. They and it's about one hundred fifty thousand dollars, probably more. And now my now my numbers oh, yeah. are old. It'll be higher. Two or three years old at this point. But when we were initially asking for the rapid flashing beacon, beacon, which is what he asked for, mm -hmm. um, they were about one hundred and fifty, and I'm sure they're now two fifty at this point. We don't really know, but. Um, so that wasn't, we weren't granted any additional enhancements as part of this pedestrian safety. You know, we did get lots yeah. of good things. But not down there. That I one, mean, you know, yeah, they didn't. This, this is another thing that if the village decided to fund um, that we could also propose to the DOT and let their approval do ourselves. Do it ourselves, yeah. I mean, that's what the town mm -hmm. proposed for Sunset where the 70-year-old mm -hmm. gentleman was killed. Um, and they were denied. They've been, I mean, they've had yes. the funds set aside and they're repeatedly denied. So I don't know if we'd be given, that's a, a great question to ask DOT. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, they, although they've been super collaborative throughout this whole process, as we know with our, mm -hmm. the uh, media, the pedestrian refuge island. Um, so we're probably in a, in a good place to ask again. Yeah. Um, this is, it's a terrible intersection. It's horrible. Yeah. I, we, it, I think we need to circle back, you know, yeah, and, the, and now you know it's warming up. They're going to be coming back in. You know, let's yeah. we'll reach out. Are we talking about seventy five Monroe? No, we're talking about. Um, I know where the crosswalk is. What I'm wondering yeah. is with 70. the construction of mm -hmm. seventy potential oh. construction of seventy five Monroe, Having that, that there would be an opportunity for them to revisit the traffic patterns as as ingress egress out of there. And revisit that entire. Let's throw that into area. Yeah. Because it's going to change the dynamic. Yeah. Be more mm -hmm. pedestrians potentially, and they might want mm -hmm. to revisit. That's a great point. Yeah. That's a good one. Let's throw, we'll throw that in. I love and, that. And we've been Maybe. hesitant to put a light in because of the railroad. They don't want it backed up. So if there's all sorts of tricky stuff. A rapid yeah. flashing beacon beacon uh, might you know help. Um, I mean, undoubtedly it would help some. Um, and it wouldn't back up traffic, uh, but it is very expensive. And right. as we just said, we don't have the funds. Yeah, we don't have the funds. But, but, but yeah, they're rolling it with um, whatever happens next at 75 in row. And I put, weren't they doing some sort of median originally? They're doing a median on the west side. Yeah, they're still doing it. Coming into the village and also uh, 
Monorail Bridge, uh, I think, is slated for yeah. decking in uh, so 2026. Okay. Yeah. So there again, the DOT is going to be back here yeah. doing a bunch of work. We put together the plan, maybe even, and propose it to them. And Let's get it. in right up yeah. front. So we need to stay on that. Yeah. You know, as we pass the baton, stay on that. Yeah. <laughs> um, because the squeaky wheel, that's what happened with our median. I mean, we, yeah. you know, we, yeah. we kept asking. We, so, were, we were on And we've done all we can. We've got flags out there. We, we're paying yeah, for a, right, yeah, know, a, a crossing guard, but we can't have it all over yeah. there. Um, we put the pedestrian sign out, which helps. Yeah, that gets mutilated as well. Um, yeah, and but it slows people down. Yeah. So anyway, um, but I think it would be good to have this um, resident reach out to DOT and write a letter. To yeah, them. no, mm -hmm. honestly, I tell everybody, um, especially with potholes and you know RGE with their lights. Yeah. You know, um, oh. A lot of the times they get sick of hearing from me, so please, by all means, contact them and let them know. Be yep. um, vigilant about it. Exactly. Be pushy. Exactly. Or else they're not going to listen. Yes. Public comment. Peggy Caravera, City 1 South Main. The new town court building on Monroe is another impact. Oh, good yeah. one. Thanks, Peg. Yeah, that's that good. Is, actually, that's really good. I'm glad you brought that yeah. up. I forgot about that. Let's throw that in, too. Yeah, we yeah. might be able to yeah. collaborate with the town. Make a case yeah. for the town. And maybe the town can really help us and give us more support, yeah. saying yeah. there's going to be so much additional traffic as well. Yeah. So between the, uh, the two municipalities. That's really great. Thanks, we can Peggy. double team them. Yeah. yeah. OK, that's a good one. Um, okay, so then, yeah, Justin, sure. Just wanted to uh, use this opportunity to say thank you to Trustee Stetzer for uh, being so well informed about uh, pedestrian safety issues and being an advocate for active transportation over the years during your time on the board. Thank you very much. And, and uh, is it okay if we call you at every meeting? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's a nice guy. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to help. Careful, <laughs> yeah, 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 watch it, Renee. She's a permanent liaison to nice guy. I know, I know. Yeah, really, really great work. Um, okay, but we have our action items, and we'll circle back. And we're gonna, we have to circle back anyway with uh, Josh Versace. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, we're talking about that next. Yeah, time. exactly. So we're gonna, you know, it's all yeah. kind of wrapped in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up is the village parking code update, <laughs> and big shout out of thanks to. Zach and all kinds of inclement weather going out and measuring and also to Jeff for going through street by street and block by block trying to identify properly uh, for, for the, you know, the updates because uh, this was necessary. Um, again, it's part of the whole overall nice stop project um, to address, you know, parking um, with all the new striping and in the different areas. So. Um, and Renee, yeah, we all you were out, you were I'm part of that. Not nearly as much as you. Yeah, well, he he did the whole yeah. thing, and uh, what was it? A, behind, uh, a screen. Yeah, but was it an ice storm or something? Well, that, that was, yeah, I mean, it, it was. This was, was really something. So, um, anyway, do you want do you want to you know pick up on this and where we where we are? Uh, yeah, so we're just trying to sort out some of the uh, discrepancies in the parking. Yeah, uh, yeah nice that started. Yeah. Started. Yeah. yeah. We've gone through our code and said. We're coming, uh, this is how I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, we're coming through, we're going to resign. We found some discrepancies in your code. Or, you know, if you want us to sign it, we're going to sign it the right way so to change your code. Yeah, so we're trying to beat them before they finish this project to uh, get the policy sorted out. So, I'm oh, sorry, law. 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 Um, so the DOT will, in fact, replace all the signage for us. Um, we're kind of under the gun to get it done at this point because they got about a month left of work, so they say. Um, yeah, so they say. Yeah. But notably, they have told that they, they're loosening some things that we saw, thought were kind of set in stone. We thought we couldn't have parking on some of these arterials, and they're saying you can have parking on yeah. three parking. So yeah. this is great. It's and great actually trip. clarifying some of these areas where even though they've elongated some of those turning lanes because that's their new standard, we can still keep our parking, for example, in front of thirsties and um, and hungry. And people are parking there. Yeah, we're seeing them use that. Yeah, um, South Main Street yep. um, uh, towards um, uh, Justin Street as well on that side. Um, so it was like we're getting on street parking in places that we didn't. Mm -hmm. didn't yeah, and we're getting the spots in, in front of the old Bank of America building, yep. and the, that's sort of that first step to us really 
probably eliminating that right turn lane. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so that was a huge step forward. That was a big step. And um, and I think what really um, sort of brought them around is when they had it blocked off for so long, and they realized, you know, that that they kind of made their own case. Yeah. You know, so. I think we have an advocate from the engineer in charge of the project. Yes. For yeah. Blocking that right turn lane off yeah. completely. So one of the downsides to clarifying this and for them up to updating some of the, the signs is that their new requirement, or maybe it's an old requirement, that no parking signs and maybe parking signs as well have to be every 200 feet. Uh, is that right? Said, yeah. 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 So it's a lot of additional <coughs> signage, signage yeah. that we didn't have, a lot of additional, you know, noise <laughs> in our view. Um, so on some of these, we we're talking like so we've had the discussion about no. um, Monroe, for example. If we just opened up parking there the whole way, um, which we don't think people would naturally park in certain places because everyone has long driveways and big, um, uh, you know, it, it wouldn't be used uh, as much as extensively. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, we, we could eliminate the sign pollution. Um, so if we move this to public hearing and we decide and we have a discussion about loosening, like if we decide on Monroe that after um, DOT reviews this, that we just are going to lift the restrictions entirely. And so the sign would be you no parking from this point forward. Yeah, you know, if we decided to do that, that would be less restrictive, right? Well, if we move this to public hearing, right. we have, as you suggested, DOT look this over, and one time, once again, they come back and say, you know, you could lift it on both sides, and then you wouldn't have any signs. Um, that would be less restrictive, not, right? It's not an different. easy answer. Okay. <laughs> because I think. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I do think it's not an easy answer. No, it's not an easy answer because the existing no parking right is i guess it would still be less restrictive be less restrictive if, if we, we decide we between now and the, and the hearing date right, right. well it. okay then we would be making what we did less restrictive than what we're doing right now right yeah right okay because i think that's so that one uh, one thing we keep going well at least I, mean, mm -hmm. I go daily back and forth on that when i look mm -hmm. at right now there are no signs on that already visually, you know, crowded place. Mm -hmm. If we, and we asked our, you know, traffic engineers mm -hmm. about this too. Mm -hmm. we, just looked at, we don't think that people are gonna line up. Park people will park stuff. where they don't think it's safe. Right. You know, it's it's self-selecting to, to the, I mean, I'm seeing this now down where I am yeah. on South Main because of, of how they drew that. Essentially, it looks like a plumb line almost, yeah. you know. And I mean, you're, you're down there too, and I'm noticing all of a sudden it stops, we're like, we're not parking. We see that because the center of striping has moved. I mean, Except at least on Sundays. Sunday, <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, you know, yeah. I still haven't seen no it on yeah. Sundays, yeah. though. I mean, I spoke with the churches there and they said that they haven't received any complaints or, you know, anything about it. So I'm, I'm thinking of the two, two or three spots um, in front of chandeliers on one row that uh -huh. have always been open to people parking there, but nobody does right. park there right. because of yeah, you it know, just doesn't feel it like doesn't feel like a right. good situation to park in. So, yeah. Um, although it is posted. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I'm still on the fence there. I can be convinced um, to so that we don't have signs every 200 feet. Well, the problem is going to be, are they going to put the signs in before we approve the local law? No. OK. They are bound by that law, so That's they right. absolutely would. Um, well, but it's not a law yet. The other option would be to wait until they're out of here and we do it ourselves. And then we kind of have control, but not necessarily the enforcement. Right. We just, I feel like we're going in circles again. These yep. are the discussions we've been having. I yep. really just like having a thousand signs, and we know that allowing street parking comes yeah. traffic. And yeah, and I don't think people are so I don't yeah. you Remember that off the top of your head, what the linear feed is at the top, and we'll change it. This is on um, Monroe. I believe it was approximately 500 feet from parking permitted to the end of that parking permitted area. So three times. 
Right. Well, it would be the no parking signs that would have to be up. Yeah. So it's about 2,500 feet, maybe, to. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so 2,000 yeah. feet, you're talking 10 yeah. signs between yeah, well, it's a lot of North Main Street and the Village Line. Yeah. Well, of course, I yeah. So, sort of think, I don't know. No parking from here to yeah. infinity. Yeah. I'm thinking that. No, allowing parking, you mean. Yeah. yeah, but, yeah. And then just Lifting having the one sign. Yeah. yeah. So they don't from think this point there's forward. going to be a big danger of people parking there. I, don't, I, I, I would agree. The likelihood agreed. that they would park on both sides at the same time, which is why we delineated it the way we did. Right. I mean, I mean, we, we, we can, can try we it. We can play it by ear and see how it goes. Let's if we try start it. having issues with yeah. it, we start adding more signage. Right. I mean, this is also about we're not advertising, we're not getting out and painting it like some of the right. spots where we definitely want to encourage parking. Right. Yeah. So it seems to make sense to yeah. do it. Delivery trucks already do it, you know, yeah. landscapers do it. Like. Yeah, it's sort of services that yeah. it's just sort of temporary kind of thing. Yeah. I don't know. I, that's yeah. the one thing that I. I'm still, I, I think we should consider. I mean, I, I'm more, I just can't stand the idea of all You've been pushing. I mean, been no, pushing I, I'm not all right with this. Now I have to change everything I've done. <laughs> no, I'm not married. Just the one section, right? And you well, were trying to was, get us there. You were like, this is going to be a lot of signs. Yeah, and we were like, I know. well, the weekend. Well, I was doing that because I really didn't want to write the law. So. Yeah. <laughs> but doesn't this simplify? Don't you just get to. Do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm okay. joking. Whatever the board okay. wants. I, I think the original, uh, That's the original what he re concern right. was was North Main Street on the west side of the road because there's no parking down through there. So a sign from from that the village line concerned. on the north end yeah. going all the way up to to Mon Road for North Main. Yeah, I yeah. think more North Main. I think. Yeah, but that different... see that's. You're going to have the same signage problem. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's that's for all the signs. Well, I think we're worried about Monroe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Both sides. Because that's a long run after the permitted. You know, so both sides of Monroe. Yeah, would you just say 12 signs? Well, that's on the, that that's on the north side. Yeah. Which I have up. On the south side, it's probably eight. I've never taken notice to the signage that's already existing out there. There isn't. I mean, there's, there's it's middle. Yeah, it's middle. Yeah, but that's a whole. That's that's a that's that side is no parking from where Washington to yeah to southern. Right, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. 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 No, and it's right now. It's I mean, this is our the visual field is going to be cluttered. Yeah, I mean it's going to be it's going to be signage every every 200 feet on both sides of that road, and it's going to be signage every 200 feet <laughs> on, the, the on the west road? side. Yeah, on the west side of North Bay. All right. Well, if you guys, um, how are you guys deciding? Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, Let me know. I'll I'll add signs where needed, um, or take them away if the DOT puts too many up. And, and frankly, it hasn't been a huge issue. Yeah. Um, Monroe, you know, I mean, I think we're kind of, you know, a hammer looking for a nail at yeah. this point. So, you know, I say let's go with DOT said lift it. Yeah, DOT yeah. recommended that. Just lift it and yeah. the best, right? That's that's I what I'm, I'm in. Okay. And what? Um, how do we want to do this? We want to change. The Are we line. talking about North Main Street as well? Uh, well, that's so what. That's I, a I lot. Thought, of I thought we were talking about North Main yeah. Street, but on West Side. The east side we got pretty well. Right. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Straightened out. Yeah. But. No, who parks? No one parks on the west side. There's no way to park. There is no way. Right. You know, we don't, I think we don't what, have designated spots that are painted. With what, which we will probably, just up here by right. the big right. 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 So that I feel will like, be defined by the signage. Right. The yeah. Street. We don't need signage. For the two spots, we're designating yeah. two spots. We're designating two spots, but if you take. If you don't put no parking anywhere, then then if, if if you decide not to make the west side of North Main a no parking area, then you can just strike those two spots. You don't have to add any signs. Okay. That's where we're going. Yeah. Well, I'm going to slip my wrist. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean so. You said you said re review 
do this all again. And as I was like thinking through the conversation yeah. and then looking at Google Maps going every 200 feet, that's a crap ton of signs. We yeah. did mention several times. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm still confused whether this is going to be submitted to the state or not. Well, it can't. I'm, be not, I'm, I'm sorry, not the state, the DOT. What do you say? What are you going to say? Well, you guys, the first it thing has you have to, be to do is to decide state. if you want to amend right. your legal notice, right? Local law. We don't have a legal notice. Yet. I right. hold on, I said the wrong thing. Yeah, okay. Local. You want to get the local law yeah. with the suggested changes from Trustee Stetzer, the mayor, and Zach, mm -hmm. and the attorney slit in his wrist, uh, set that public hearing with the amendment, and then you, Jeff can change the local law, and then you can send it to the DOT for the review. By that time, the DOT might be cleared out here. Well, that I'm assuming it's a Word doc, and he can cut and paste. But well, for them to do any signage changes. Well, let's let's go for it. Let's just go for it, because we know what we want. We want less signage. Yes, we want less signage. We don't want to have that visual sign pollution throughout right. our village. There's too many signs. And, and, many signs. and we open it up, we'll see where people naturally park. And we can, like, I don't think your amendment. measurements were for naught because I think, yeah, you know, know, I think we're going to do them as we identify problems. Point. Yeah. And yeah. Then we we see can start with filing yeah. as we need to. I don't know if that, I, I don't want to, I, I, this is why I didn't want to just email you and throw it in because I think we need to publicly talk about this, mm -hmm. um, the signs. Um, yeah. I, I, well, we're, we're all in agreement. We don't want the sign pollution. Yeah. Right. And this is a good starting point for us. We can always amend it right. to. If we see problems, we see start right. to park in certain areas. Okay. So that's the action right. item. Yeah. So what we're talking about is amending. Um, the no parking code to have only no parking zones for a distance past um, Main Street on both sides of Monroe. So there's going to be no parking zones for X number of feet mm -hmm. on Monroe. At I'm yeah, in Royal Ave west of Maine on both sides. So there's no parking there. Because of the fire right. department. Yep. And then what well, and then mm -hmm. there's and then nothing's the, designated. Yeah, the, the south side there's still two parking spots. And then the south side Those there's are two, designated. still two parking spots. There are so many. Which will be time all so it's gonna be a okay, I got it. Everything else is gonna be no, never mind. I got you it. Park right. anywhere. So it's, yeah, it's one. Free, free, free one. And then the right, side right. And, then and then north and then on North Main on the west side. Uh, there's it's we're not park doing anywhere. anything. Yeah, no, we can park anywhere. Besides the two spots that will be defined on the ground. On the ground, but exactly. Well then you can park there but anyway. That doesn't okay. need to be And then we're leaving the then we're gonna leave the um east side of North Main the way we've got it. Yes, because there are different restrictions. Right, and, yeah. and then State Street will be what we've got. Right? Yeah, State Street the stays the same. So, yeah, they didn't, all right, yeah. just for my clarification on what we are going to be painting on, um, on, on North Main Street on the east side of the road, because we are looking at adding in parking uh, north of the entrance into the dairy. Mm -hmm. yep. Are we defining those spots? Or are we just going to? We talked them? about just delineating from one end to another because of different car sizes. So you have a parameter. North so of the yeah. Uh, Currently, what it is is a turning lane. Right. But so the, the fog line is right on the curb. I don't uh, know. We can't really define those spots. Right. Yeah, we, might be we can't do it in front of Thirsties either. Right. right. Yeah. So outside yeah. of signage, there's nothing so really signage, that's going just, to show that there is parking. So there's just signage there. then. You're right. So we do uh, need to uh, have some added signage. Poor Jeff. I know. Sorry. Oh my God. Huh. I thought well, this was going to be a minute. Well, did we just change <laughs> the south side of, of or the east side you of need a little North Main Street. Not you need a little change. You need a map of push what the language that that you wrote needs trying to reflect that on the road. So 
Oh, that's your problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. He's saying we can't paint the moon to turn land. So we would have to have the science. <laughs> but Jeff has what he needs to to do the. Yeah. Basically okay. Lifting the restrictions. Yeah. Yeah. It's Where a, we had um, Zach out and and uh, you Not know everywhere. the, the like upside that. of this is that we now have uh, taken roughly 25 signs away from our streets. Yeah. So that's a good thing. And someone could park. And someone who lives on. Monroe can park in front of their house if they need to when they have their driveway drain now they can't. Right. Yeah. If if needed. Okay. If needed, which yeah. unrestricted. Yeah. Yes, yes. We're, 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 so I think we've you know, April I think 15, we're down someone there. can park their car out for overnights and everything sitting on that. But we we don't really have that on Monroe. So anyway. Okay, you're going to park there just to do it. You just want to show people, don't you? Okay. Are we setting up? Oh, with the new truck. Okay, so are we, okay, yeah. hang on. Let's, let's, I want to close this out. It's getting late. Okay, so public hearing. We're going to set the public hearing. Are you okay doing that? If you, don't... You, you have to amend the local law and send it to me. So I guess, right. how long do you need to amend it? I mean, we can set it for, well, we, we couldn't send it any sooner than April 27th because it's got to go, as you said, to Winnow County. Oh, the county. Okay. <laughs> if you need time to amend it, we could just say May 11th. And right, let's do that because we got to, I got to do it and then you have to give it, you have to give the new stuff to the county. Right, so that gives us time for you to get it mended and give it to me in a timely manner so I can have it 30 days to. <laughs> and Josh said it doesn't need to be codified, it just, it just needs to know. They need to it needs review to be it. cleared up. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. What we're doing, what our intentions so, are. So having said, put it in into hearing will be enough. And yeah, just need this. yeah. Okay, that, 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 that was the understanding. All right, so um, are, are we still going to be submitting that to the DOT then? Yes. Yeah. Have you so if we submit it to the DOT, we have to do it on the recommendation not to add any science. Because no. they will be bound by a law to do so. Can am, you I, am I guessing? Stop. He's going to update it with the changes you guys made. Can you edit, give it to the DOT after Jeff makes the changes? That's, that's what, what we're saying. We're saying so don't give them this copy. Yes. Yeah. We're not giving, no. The, the action that we just took is that our attorney is making the amendments so the signs are reduced. Once he completes that, we will be giving that to the DOT. So my request would be, can you just give Josh a heads up and say it's, it's coming? It's, it's being amended. Yeah. It's most likely going to get to you after you guys have. Uh, we don't need, to, we don't need to make those assumptions. Right. Right. Okay. We're working as quickly and as diligently as we can, and we are going to turn it around as quickly as we can and get it to my staff. Got it. Okay. okay. So Thank you. Amended copy from Jeff Apologies for like one of my last actions. Throwing this whole thing into chaos, but I just I don't want to. I think it's a good decision not to have a thousand signs out on the. Yeah. I think it's great, really, and 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 again, we can amend it as needed. Okay, yeah. so. And consider so, your apology. I'll let you know. <laughs> we're okay. at the. Uh, we're a little more than two hours. Are we? Do you want to just push through, or are we going to take a break like the boss? What are we going to do? We're we're pretty close. Okay. Yeah. Pretty close. Thanks. Thanks for bringing it up, but we'll we'll keep it moving here. Um, okay, so we have to have a motion. Yes, to set the public hearing for May 11th at 7 p.m. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we're moving. Trustee Lightgate. Aye. Trustee Lampier. Aye. Trustee Keating. Aye. Trustee Stetson. Aye. Mayor Palmer. Aye. Motion passes. Okay. Um, our next exciting item is the Railroad Safety Act of 2023. Um, this has been in the news. Um, and the town, um, you, what you have in your packet and what's been posted, is a letter that the town has put together to send to um, you know, our elected officials um, at the state and also at the federal level. Um, and I, 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 we've all had a chance to read it. I mean, it's, this is really about concerns about what's in the railroad cars, what ha you know, all of that, being informed, informing our communities. Um, my recommendation and my thought is that we should grab this letter and sign on as well. Um, I, think it's, I think it's important. You know, given given mm -hmm. things that are going on, and we've also had residents express concerns as well, and I think we're all feeling mm -hmm. that, feeling that way too. So, um, and I can even remember years ago when there were oil cars coming through, and there were concerns mm -hmm. from the back in oil fields. They're no longer coming through, but there's plenty uh, of stuff. Yeah, the, who knows? You know, so this oh, yeah. this I think is good, and I think we should all sign on. So, 
Um, any thoughts from the board? Should we just sign up the same letters? Basically? Well, you know, we can use it as a template, and then we'll, you know, we'll all sign it. Put it into ChatGPT, and then put it in. There we go. <laughs> I see how you're going to so. going forward. <laughs> just have it write everything for us. Yeah, yeah. really. <laughs> sure. Okay, we need a motion to direct the. Yeah, motion. Something. Uh, so moved. Oh, thanks. Good. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Okay, roll call. Trustee Keating. Aye. Trustee Stetzer. Aye. Trustee Lincoln. Aye. Trustee Lanfair. Aye. Mayor Plummer. Aye. Motion passes. Okay, next up, uh, Copper Beach Park public input follow up. Um, yeah, last night, you know, we had the uh, a little forum and there's a video of it. Um, it's, you know, it's been posted. Um, you know, the town's done for them. Um, so I know you, Justin, you want to have a follow up on that. So if you want to just. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I uh, appreciated the, the forum last night and um, I've, I've been thinking about this. And I guess my, um, I, I love the idea of the park and I think the concept is great as well. Um, and what I'm thinking about is making sure that our residents are heard of the village, uh, of our various appointed boards. Um, and that we're communicating clearly with the town. Um, you know, I, I keep coming back to the fact that the having a village government um, is, is important precisely because it allows our residents to be heard. And um, my concern with some of these great initiatives and, and investments from the town is that um, while they are great, um, they have chosen, as we found out last night, um, not to apply to the village and not to go through the, the village board processes. Um, and my concern is that you know, that, that may not allow some, some people to be heard. Um, so my proposal here, based on some reading and, and based on discussions with our, our council, um, I don't know if he agrees on, on all parts of this. I think there's a, a board decision about um, how we proceed. But one of the things that we've done in the past is to um, look at these decisions <coughs> and apply a, a balancing mm -hmm. test of, of nine factors to uh, decide if we should um, uh, subject the, uh, the project to our, our zoning authority. Um, we, did, we did that also last fall with the pavilion. Yep. You know, you may recall, you know, at the Spiegel Center. Yeah, yeah. And, and it seems like, you know, legally that's the, the right way to go about things. Mm -hmm. It's it's clean. Um, one thing uh, that I that I did find in a document that um, uh, is, is similar to the one provided by our attorney is that they say this should really be done in a public hearing. I guess there is some subsequent case law um, that I wasn't able to find. It's another citation, but it, it said that it should be, the, those factors should be considered in a, um, a public hearing. Um, this is another article that I, I came across, mm -hmm. and um, uh, it, it has some uh, useful information on, on this case where um, the government, uh, the town has limited immunity, I guess, uh, and, and we would be um, looking at the, uh, the nine different factors. So my, my proposal is that we uh, schedule a public hearing um, mm -hmm. to consider these nine factors. Um, at the next development meeting and discuss today. Are you making a motion? Uh, well, yes. That was a proposal. Are you turning it into a motion? <laughs> I, I will turn it into a motion. We, we want to get out of here too, right? So <laughs> let's get right to the point. I make a motion that we, uh, Dorothy, what, what would the date be of the public hearing for this? And I second that. Uh, we'll really second it just so you know. So we can have yeah, we're, we're so cruising now. With this one, I don't, doesn't have to go to the county public notice. I would say April 13th. Mm -hmm. I make a motion that we set a public hearing to consider the nine factors uh, on April 13th. I would second that uh, point of discussion. Yeah, sure. Um, in addition, as we know, anticipating changes to the building on Monroe Avenue, I think this is um, setting an important precedent because we have a situation in that in that um, on that plot of land where the town is looking to expand parking potentially because of the use of that building. And I don't think that the village would want to end up with parking in the front lawn of that. Yeah, no kidding. And so I think that at that time we might want to consider having it go through the board process. Mm -hmm. If we stick to our process, then we have uh, legs to stand on um, regarding this consistency yeah, of that, how we deal with thanks. thanks for putting that on the record. Thank you. Uh, which yeah. building are you talking about? It, it, on Monroe, the, mm -hmm. where Iris Craig's? Rick Leisure's building. It's a uh, yellow thing with the It's a big real estate colors. building. Oh, okay, got it. You know, the pillars. Right yeah. across from the yeah. It's sort of like Terra, mm -hmm. but not. 
I, I think um, if, if we do this process well, it, it really benefits not only the village, but also the town in, in ensuring that our communication is clear. So I, I was hoping that when we schedule the public hearing, we would send notice to the um, appointed boards. Uh, we would normally have jurisdiction over these issues in, in our village government, the uh, HPB and the uh, Planning and Zoning Board, um, and also to the town as well. So they can participate. Great, okay, so any, any further discussion? Because we have a motion and a second. Okay, roll call please. Trustee Lankett? Aye. Trustee Lankett? Aye. Trustee Keating? Aye. Trustee Stetzer? Aye. Mayor Plummer? Aye. Motion passes. Um, and this will be very quick. Do we, we wanted to have that executive. Can we pay the bills first? Oh, oh the bill pay. Do we have an executive session? It, it's real quick though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dan, we're driving, Dan, we're driving yeah. this out just yeah. for you. I it's, 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 it's icing on the retirement cake. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, swear. sorry, I forgot Bill Pay, yes, you're right. No. You can all okay. fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that went on the record. Okay, then. And we okay. didn't answer. Oh, we have Bill Pay. Uh, first, okay. up, first up, Susan, thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you, Okay, okay. Bill Pay. Heat in the budget? Pardon me? Heat? Is it oh. cold in here? Oh, no, I had to cut the heat so we could do the road project. <laughs> 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 yeah, we'll put a big sign up, wear your sweaters, you know, when you come in. Yeah. All right, thanks. He is mad. Thank you. Okay, so what's first up here? Um, the only thing I want to add to this is um, Brandon's HSA funding for April, since we're doing it on a monthly basis. Right. And Zach has come to me, and he needs to have the rest of his HSA funding contributed due to so an fun. issue. So okay. along with the bill pay. Okay, so. we have a motion. Is there a okay. second? Okay, we have a second from Renee. Roll call, please. Trustee Setzer. Aye. Trustee Keating. Aye. Trustee Lanfear. Aye. Trustee Lakett. Aye. Mayor Plummer. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. And I don't have anything to add tonight. I think I've spoken enough. I will make a motion that we approve the bill pay. I think we just did. Just oh, did, we, did we do it? Yeah. Oh, she just added in the HSA. That's and then I, I, added added the HSA. I thought it was just doing the HSA. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Then we can do that separately. We can do that. Did you good? I thought it was the whole intro. I did too. Yeah, we thought Because I wasn't just that. I think we were just anxious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. Okay. Yeah. Thank okay. You. okay. Um, and this really will be quick. Um, I make a motion that we go into executive session. I'll second. Okay, we'll call. You have to give a reason. Oh, oh, for, uh, for the purpose of discussing um, an employee uh, employee performance. Okay. Did you want to? I'm sorry to bring this up. Did we want to see if there's any public comment? Oh, sure. Because we do have four people hanging. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, wow. They're hardcore tonight. Yeah. Okay. Going once. Going twice. Okay. I okay. Think we're good. Okay. Thank, thanks for checking. Thanks for that reminder. Okay. So roll call, please. Um, did we have a motion? Yeah, there was a motion. Do we have a second? I'll oh, second. second. We, everybody seconded. I think it was a group <laughs> second at this point. <laughs> Trustee Lightfoot. Aye. Trustee Lampier. Aye. Trustee Keating. Aye. Trustee Stetzer. Aye. Mayor Palmer. Aye. Motion passes. Okay. Calls, okay. please. Give me a minute. Can you shut the door, please? One minute. <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready? Sure. I make a motion to leave executive session. I'll second. Roll call, please. Trustee Setzer. Aye. Trustee Keating. Aye. Trustee Lampier. Aye. Trustee Lankett. Aye. Motion passes. Make a motion we adjourn. Okay. Oh, I get to make the motion oh, that we adjourn. You, oh, there we go. I you get, get to second. second. Yeah, I make a motion we adjourn. I second. Then <laughs> okay. Roll Trustee call. Lankett. Aye. Trustee Lampier. Aye. Trustee Setzer. Aye. Trustee Keating. Aye. Mayor Plummer. Aye. Motion passes. Okay. Thank Aye. you. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.